putting down the spray can, you're putting down the marker, and now you're picking up a knife and a gun. You know, when we get into my crime, as you'll see, there was nothing I wouldn't have done for that acceptance. They hit me with one of those Dodger bats in the back of the head, and they beat me down in there, and they stabbed me. If you, I have this hole in my what neck to this day the with a 40 bottle. So I'm like, I've always been like a loving, compassionate person. I just got lost in that this sick, twisted character that I had developed, you know? I got out on a Thursday, um, went to a party, celebrating my release on a Saturday. Oh I was God. sitting in front of that judge Monday morning with a murder charge. And when I went to my hearing, that's when they said, uh, they're gonna try you as an adult. And how was like 16, 16 really? Yeah. Embracing the fact like my life has, um, been limited to just watching like people just brutally murdered on a yard. And I said, if, if, if I check all those boxes and I do all the things that you guys want, can I go home one day? When I asked them that, they laughed at me and they told me your parole officer hasn't even been born yet. Yo, welcome back to Rancher Network Podcast. It's your boy, Yak. It's your boy, T. And we got another special one for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for the likes, the subscribes, the comments, man. We appreciate you, man. We're really we're really getting deep into this, this Rancher field, man. We love it. We're meeting so many great people. We're learning so much. And hopefully all the viewers, too, are learning a lot and gather a lot. But hopefully have a familiar face for the Reentry squad out here. We got our boy, Brian, a.k.a. Lonely James out here, man. Thank you so much for being That's out good. here, bro. We appreciate you. Um, this is a crazy story because this is one of the other first ones that we get that actually someone that that went that was in carcerated for more than what ten years. This is yeah. more than ten years. I, I think Jared was our first lifer, so this would be the second one. And what I've been telling everybody is like, uh, lifer perspective is going to be way different a hundred percent of the time right. than anyone that did a little quick turnaround. Right. You know? Exactly. So we're like, hell yeah, let's make it happen. Well, thank you, Brian. Appreciate you for being here, bro. It takes a lot. And then we saw you on Hoodstocks, bro. Good work on Hoodstocks. Thank you. Shout out to them, too, bro. Yeah, My boy is killing out, it out there. Out um, but 29 years. 29 years. Bro, that's more than my than how old I am. I'm only 23, Man. bro. You did more <laughs> years than, than I lived. Yeah. It's crazy to see that. And I'm curious to know, like, what it was like as soon as it came out, you know, like, what that perspective on or was looking like. But... Really, I want to go more in depth on, you know, kind of what, what led you into that path or, you know, what led you into that situation. So where can you tell us a little about where you grew up and then when you kind of started getting into, your, you know, um, the rebellious stage of, of your life? Yeah, sure. I mean, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, uh, traveled around a lot. Um, I my both my mother and father were addicted to heroin. Um, you know, they were caught in the throes of addiction. So I moved around a lot, you know, San Fernando and Pacoima, Sun Valley, North Hollywood. And I spent a lot of time, you know, when your parents are addicted to drugs, um, you know, you spend a lot of time alone. You know, there were days when they're preoccupied with their addiction, so they forget to feed you. They forget to give you water. Um, you know, and, and that impacted me as a child. They were going in and out of jail a lot, so I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, too. And ultimately, my mom and my dad both got incarcerated for a lengthy amount of time when I was eight years old, and that's when I got adopted by my grandparents. When you were eight years old. So you even growing up as a toddler, you were already getting, you were experiencing all that stuff with your family, the addictions and all that stuff. What, um, is there anything memorable from that experience that you had? Like one, like memorable state, like experience you're like, damn, like even to this day, you look back at it. Did you even know what it was at that yeah, point? Yeah, well, that's what old, I was going to you know? say. Um, I often say, I, you know, I was eight years old so that, you know, there was a naivete there. So, but it was a lot of like feelings that I had. Um, you know, I can always recall the feelings, um, anxiety and and fear. And I remember always like wondering what was gonna come next. Um, you know, I've seen um drug use, I've seen drug sales, I've seen overdoses, um every, you know, all the things that attend addiction. I witnessed all that, you know, before the age of 10 years old. I visited my mom in Sybil Brand. Um I watched my stepfather go away to federal prison for some years. So I, I can't say like, you know, there's a specific moment. You know, I do have flashes sometimes, but mostly feelings. There's mostly feelings involved. Which could be more powerful than anything else. Honestly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and so that happened. Um, and I, I kind of recall from like the other interviews you've done. So more towards like eight and nine years old is when you kind of started getting in, like involved with neighborhood, like being around the neighborhoods and stuff like that. Or am I wrong on that? Well, 
um, you know, when I got adopted, my grandparents, you know, my grandfather worked for 30 years for Universal Studios and he had just uh, retired. So, and they lived in a nice neighborhood in Northridge. It was, um, you know, three bedroom, two bathroom, e excellent neighborhood. And I was going to private school. So I, I had everything going on for me, but I, I was, I was so screwed up and damaged, like on the inside that I had like developed this story inside my head that like they adopted me only because they had to. You know, oh, so I started nurturing yeah, all yeah. this resentment and anger towards them, which this is not the reality of it, but this is the story that I'm telling myself. So I would spend a lot of time alone, like nurturing all these negative thoughts and feelings that just they <laughs> plagued my spirit. And it, it started to to form me. And that's when like the seeds of anger and hatred were placed in me. So I started, you know, I, I was going to private school at the time. They put me in good schools. I played basketball. You know, I excelled in basketball, but I was constantly getting in trouble in class, constantly getting in trouble in school until ultimately I got kicked out and was sent to the public school system. And that was like my first experience because I had I had been attracted to gangs like the movie Colors and, you know, N.W.A. What mm -hmm. in 88 when it came out, it like yeah. fascinated me. You mm -hmm. know, I love the idea of family. I like just all this aggression and anger I had inside. It just seemed like like the perfect outlet for me. So once I did enter the public school system, and it, it was, it was a cold school. There was a lot of um, there there was a lot of neighborhoods, a lot of gangs in there. So I, I immediately, you know, attached myself to that lifestyle, and, and and began like studying, observing, mimicking, copying it, and I didn't have to, you know, right. I, I I was in a good home. So that that just goes to show like these thoughts and these belief systems that we have, how powerful they were, because this is not something I had to do. I didn't, I didn't necessarily grow up in that. Right. That's super important too, man, that, that, you know, a lot of it, I, how many times have we heard you, you would, the first thing everyone thinks about, I, I, I was fucked up because I didn't have moms. I didn't have dad. Right. You know, you, you had some periods where you had both, you had both grandparents yeah. at least. Yeah. Right. And so again, people don't understand as a youth, we're so brainwashed by whatever it is, even outside influences. It doesn't even have to be our parents. We just start liking some outside shit, some shit on the fringe, where we're, before we know it, we're asshole deep into it, and we're like, bro, we didn't necessarily have to go that route, but yeah. it just ends up happening. And as know? I look back now, like, I mean, it, it makes sense because I understand myself now. Um, you know, I've done a lot of, you know, inventory and self-reflection. And at that time, like I'm living my life, like I'm devoid of love. I, I want acceptance. These are all things that I'm in need of. Yeah. And I went in search of them. And when I, gangs, it just, it, it was perfect. At the time, I fucking hated Brian James. I hated that person right there. I wanted to be somebody entirely new. And in gangs, I remember somebody gave me the phrase one time. They said, this is, this is a full-time job. This is 24-7. Right. So I could be somebody completely new. And it comes with... The girls, the money, the cars, right. like all these things that just look so fascinating to me. So it was an easy decision. And it came with the drugs. It numbed all these these feelings that I was having. It's wild because as, as an outsider, seeing like the way you explain it, you have been, you're in the right place. You had the... You had the grandparents, you had the home, you had the schooling, more important than education. Trans transitioning from like a private school over to a public school, man, you're getting exposed to so much like right off the bat. But the fact, it just trips me out that you had it all, or not all, but you had the majority of it, but that's still just like deep down emotions. The biggest thing, emotions led you down that path. Yeah. That just shows how yeah. strong your mental health could be. And it's so important for people to acknowledge that. Mental Fuck health yeah, is man. one of the biggest components yeah. that could lead you in any way. Make sure you take care of yourself. And I just say that now, and I'm sure you're going to touch on that. Yeah. Because that was probably one of the biggest things you had to overcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to us then when you, so you started seeing like this family component in in gangs especially when transitioning to the public schools yeah the love the affection like yeah. the, you know how, how was that yeah did you trip out on like bro these fucking kids are ghetto these kids are a little yeah. crazier than what was going on over here yeah. or and it's a trip right. because you know i'm living in northridge which you know for the most part is is, is a decent area it's, mm -hmm. it's in the valley it's in the even suburbs. even at that time yeah okay i mean it's it's grimy now you know <laughs> but at the sure. time like it, it's it's a valley suburb and it's a nice area like Close to million dollar homes in this and and the school home junior high is right there. This is at a time when they're doing their busing. So every day about 30 buses will come in, Compton, Watts, South Central. And 
all that culture, all that gang culture right there was just right there inside the oh, school. Man. The melting pot. Yeah, and, just... and, and, and I loved it. Like, I loved it. I attached myself, like, 100% to it. Wow. Yeah. How do you think that happened? Did you meet somebody that you hit it off with or sure. something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, like, a bunch of different people. Um, I, I just, I, it was the style. It was, you know, the reference of family. Um the, the, the adrenaline rush, the excitement of it, like the fighting. And I remember, like, I, I, I was scared because, like I said, I'm, I'm not built for this. Like, nothing mm -hmm. in my childhood prepared me, like, for the life that I've lived. But, uh, you know, I was just the kind of person that always just, if something scared me, I, I, I run to it. I go to it. And it was scary, but it was exciting. And, and it fulfilled, like, all the needs that I needed, in, in, like, on the inside. No, I hear you. How so when you, when while you were going to school when did you actually start involving yourself into like a were you did you find yourself in a specific gang then or like did you start guiding yourself towards more like a, a special like you know yeah neighborhood or yeah, anything yeah. Like how, that? how did you find that one crew right where you're like exactly. I think this is me this yeah is, this well is at I'm the gonna... time I, I was I was a tagger I, I was doing a lot of tagging and um you know which totally fed the self esteem you know because I you know I'm hitting the freeways and the walls and people yeah. would come up like uh -huh. oh man you're so and so mm -hmm. and that just that was the best feeling. Oh, in the so world. you felt that love even as a tagger. That's interesting. Yeah, like yeah. you were getting that respect even as a tagger, like that. Yeah. Well, when somebody would come up, like you know, see, bomb the freeway all night, and like, hey, I saw mm -hmm. that in the freeway, and that's yeah. just like that. That fed my uh, self esteem, like in a way unlike anything other. So, like any addiction, I I, I needed more, mm -hmm. you know, and I needed more. And, and this is a time when you know there's a lot of pressure on taggers to, uh, you know, uh, assimilate with the gangs, and a lot of my friends were graduating from tagging into gangs so i naturally followed them what does that look like graduating um i would say it's going from high school to college like it, it's like or college to the big leagues like you're you're putting down the spray can you're putting down the marker and now you're picking up a knife and a gun you know you're not you're not uh writing on the freeway no more you're you're driving around hunting people now at this point that's you, a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. And, and with tagging, like you, you settle your 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 beefs. I guess you would call them with like a battle or something. And now, like you know, there's bloodshed, and it's it's like it's urban warfare. Fuck, that's a crazy perspective to have. Like just yeah. a, like the way that that's considered graduation for a lot. Yeah. And what's trippy too is like even and if we go back to the sites interview, make sure y'all check it out. Right. He touched on that too. Like he ended up finding he didn't go to gang banging, but he found everything he needed in the graph. And he took it that far up to where and end up facing fucking 40, 50 something um, felony graffiti charges. That yeah. was his thing. He completely got lost in it. Um, but, you know, it, it people don't get that. I love the way you put it. That's exactly what happens. You either fucking start hanging on heavens in the freeway yeah. or yeah. you go that far up, right, where you're fucking putting a rope or something or whatever you do. Or you end up, it always happens, right? You transition into the gang banging phase. Right? Yeah, well, you, they call it the fast lane. Like you just, you, you keep going. And it, it was similar, you know, with my drug addiction. You know, it started with weed and weed ultimately didn't, wasn't enough. Then it was the primos. And then it was meth. And ultimately it was heroin. Like it was always just that next thing Fuck. that ultimately yeah. to, the, to, to my destruction. Did that start during that tagging stage, like the, the the participating in like you know drugs and and you know abusing that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, it, it was it was like drinking and and it's always a trip because I hated drugs because I seen it, it, heroin had consumed my family tree. So yeah. like I despised the drugs, but the people that I wanted to to attract and to be with and to be a part of, like they were drinking and smoking weed, and like I was that was I was more scared of that than anything. Like, I had so much anger and aggression inside me. Like, the putting in work part was, like, not difficult because I, I needed an outlet for that. But the drugs, like, the first time I ever drank or smoked weed, I did it by myself because I, want, I didn't want to look stupid when I did it in front of everybody oh, else. Damn, that's, that's, that's crazy. Story. Right, right. Exhaling instead of inhaling, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I stole $20 out of this girl's purse in school. I went and bought, uh, like, a dub sack, and I went into my, and I, you know, the uh, the Pepsi can, remember, uh -huh. the holes and all <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. And I did it by myself because I knew prior to that night, they were like, they were passing around smoking yeah. me. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm high already. Like, because I didn't want to look stupid and yeah. choke in front of everybody. So I literally did it alone, like to practice. So when the time came to do it, 
That's so interesting. I'm looking at it the perspective like you re- literally practice so you wouldn't be ashamed of nothing. Yeah. So you'd be accepted by something. There is nothing. I mean, ultimately, you know, when we get into my crime, as you'll see, there was nothing I wouldn't have done for that acceptance. And once I got it, there was, I was going to maintain it at all costs. Wow. Well, <laughs> I'm tripping mindset, up, man. Yeah, That's, yeah sure. it's like that. The perspective you're putting is is really, it's just so detailed. You graduate. You graduate at what age from tagging into into game banging? So this is eighty nine. So. Damn, 89. I was born 89. That's insane. Yeah. I figure maybe Brian's age because he's like 23, 24, but yeah. I'm 33. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> You're old, dog. Yeah, I'm no, I'm just kidding. Right I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah, I'm 45, so I'm Gosh, hella sheesh. old. Then. If you know. Young 45. <laughs> though. Young yeah. 45. Yeah, like, so, you know, I guess that's the upside <laughs> of prison. It preserves you. But um, yeah, 89. So it was the summer between 14 and 15, I would say, when like shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. When, when it... it I progressed and I became, I would say, dangerous at that summer. What were some stuff that you were participating in as far as, far as like, in, or when did you get jumped in in any way to anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you know, this is early 90s. So, yeah, I did the whole 13 seconds, you know, uh, hip dislocated, eye busted, you know, the whole nine. They, they beat you down. They beat Brian down, picked Lonely up off the pavement, you know? Oh, that's deep right there. You know, gave me a 38 snub nose and a hug and said, you know? So I'm looking at, I'm also looking at this in, a, in the perspective as an outsider too. You are, you're not Hispanic. No. You're not black. Mm-hmm. Where where do you guide yourself into what neighborhood from there? Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out because you paint the, Good like, question. from yeah, everybody yeah, that yeah. I hear, it's like, Yo, you're this color, so you go with this. Your sure, color. you're sure. this. Yeah. I'm curious to know, like that, like and, yeah, educate and there me were on white that. gangs in that area too, right? Back in yeah, that time, no? yeah. Um, well, I've always uh, like my brother and sister are 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 Mexican. Have we 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 share the same mother, and so I I grew up like in a a Mexican household, mm-hmm. um, and I just gravitated. You know, my stepdad was from Sotel, and. Oh, okay. Yeah, my stepbrothers were from yeah, Venice, yeah. so I always had like um I I was always kind of around yeah, that, yeah, you yeah. know. And yeah, there were white gang, but like I I listened to rap and you know, I played basketball mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, I thought Hitler was an asshole. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> there there was no like mm-hmm. there was no uh, there's nothing to do with uh, like I just didn't have any connection to that world right there. So you got jumped in. Mm. What was one of like the first crazy stuff that you were part of from there? Man, um, I would say about a couple weeks after I got jumped in, um, I was at McDonald's with my girlfriend, and one of our, our enemies, you know, walked into the McDonald's, and it was three of them, and I remember telling her, like, damn, you know, I saw the pirates' hats, and, and I knew what was going to happen. I said, I'm with you. Maybe they're going to give me a pass. Yeah. So they walked past me, and that's all I remember. Um, what I found out later was they hit me with one of those Dodger bats in the back of the head and they beat me down in there and they stabbed me. If you, I have this hole in my neck to this day with a 40 bottle. So that was my, that was my welcome to that world and to that culture right there. I, I, I ended up getting, uh, 95 stitches and this is at the time of, you know, these, there's no cell phones or nothing. My girlfriend was able to give my mom my the the phone number and somebody called my mom and said I don't know if your son's been shot or stabbed but he's dead he's at McDonald's right now what the- that's a crazy <laughs> call bro you know that's not an average phone call yeah, yeah. No, so no, like insane. immediately like this it, my decision to join a gang like just it, it rocked everything around me like did they recognize you already or how did knowing that you were only a couple weeks in how did that happen there was no Instagram you didn't post a video about yeah, it yeah uh, the clothes I was wearing. Um, oh, they already okay. Yeah, and just through uh, like through schools and like I I, I knew who one of them were. Hmm. Yes, yeah, just through affiliations and you know I guess where I was at. No. That's fucked up, man. You're on a five star dinner date, man, at McDonald's. At McDonald's. A, you know what what I mean? Yeah, blew ten dollars on two Big Macs. You know? <laughs> right. In yeah. high school, shit. That's a good date. Yeah, that's a good date. Yeah, you get some fries with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's fucking wild. I didn't know. So it, what was that pain like? Like, you really don't remember the... What was the recovery look like for that? Well, they like... Uh, you know how you see the dogs, like, with the cones on their head? Yeah. Like, they literally, yeah. like, wrapped me up, like, you know, with one of those. 
And, you know, we were smoking a lot of weed at the time. I remember everybody was clowning, saying, like, the weed was coming out, like, when I would inhale. <laughs> <laughs> coming out from the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. shit. But I was getting arrested, like, always, like, uh, you know, I, I got arrested for, for a gun. I, we, I, got a, I, went to, I was going in and out of camp in juvenile hall. I don't think I spent more than two months at a time free. From that point forward? Yeah. From like, after that from, incident? From, 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 from the moment I got jumped in, I don't think I'd ever been free longer than three months what? ever in my life. So, so knowing that that was your first interaction, pretty much, right, for the most part, Yeah. what, what, what was your thoughts after that? Was it, I'm going to turn this shit up a notch, or, you know what, this is fucking crazy. I just got jumped in a few weeks ago, yeah, right. and I'm getting sliced up over... It's, it's, I, I can't even reconcile with this now. Like, as mm. sick as it sounds, like, there was, like, a sense of pride. Like, I knew what I signed up for, and, like, you know, when you, you, you go to the neighborhood, and, you know, you took one for the team, and everybody, you know... They're loading up guns and getting ready for the run back and all that. You just feel so good. It sounds insane to me right now, you know, where I'm at now in life. But there was a time. sense of pride and like, mm -hmm. and like excitement about it. And, and exactly like you said, it's time to kick it up a notch, you know. That's exactly, you see, I couldn't have said it more better. Damn, that's, that's fucking crazy. It, um, you would think it could go either way, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, it's understandable that it goes yeah. that way. You're just going to go a lot harder now to make sure it doesn't happen again. Right. You know? And that's a good thing to look like. Some people, like, that incident would, like, turn some people, like, yeah, okay, this didn't work out for me. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, I didn't need to do this in the first place, but nah, I was all in. Like, I had been actually, again, it's crazy to sound like dreaming about this moment for, a, like, a long time. And this was this was my time, and I, I I just had accepted the fact that this is this is what I signed up for. You're still fighting for this acceptance at that time. I'm at this point. I'm fighting to maintain it, especially in that world, because you're only good as 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 your as your next demonstration. Damn, you know, it's deep. it's the same yeah. as like in prison. Like you know, you can put a demo down and put the yard down and do your thing, and it's you you got about a forty eight hour window where you shine, and then it's on to the next topic. You know, gang, a, gang members have ADHD. Like we, we forget the, we forget everything mm -hmm. quick. You got, you got to stay in the front, in the front page. Like if you want to do something. Damn. Yeah, it's not like a one and done, right? You, you keep fucking doing something. Your homeboys, you show up and they're like, hey, that's the homie right there. People start talking about you, whispering about that's the homie right there. He just woo woo woo. You know what I mean? Yeah. And before you know it, you get this fucking adrenaline feeding off that shit. And you're getting yourself in worse and in a deeper hole and a deeper hole into yeah. that lifestyle, you know? And it's and it's almost like drugs. Like it Man. The demo wears off and you need another one just to keep your name, you know, in, in the headlines. And for someone like me craving that, craving that attention and, and needing that, I, I crazy recipe, huh? Yeah, that's a sick recipe. A sick recipe. What was your, your first experience going into juvenile hall the first time you went in? I went in for a, we were walking, it was after school, and for no, like, no reason, like, this this dude was riding his bike in the school, and, like, I walked up, like, I punched him, and I took his bike. Oh, yeah. deep, deep bow with him, yeah, man, like, come like, on. <laughs> undeserving, like, yeah. I'm, I'm a full-on, like, just garbage-ass person at that mm -hmm. point, like, just doing that, just to try to impress my friends, so, and I felt so bad, like, after I took his bike, like, after all the homies left, I literally took it to his house, knocked on his door, and ran. And I got arrested, dropping it off. What? Oh, what? I've you... never told that side of the story. <laughs> like, right, like, right now. But the arrest was... Strong. I got arrested for strong-arm robbery. Damn, that With sucks that, to know. What, what made it a strong-arm robbery? Just, oh, because you punched him. Like, I assaulted the dude. Gotcha. You know? I assaulted him, and I, and I took his property. And he identified me through the school yearbook, too. Even though you gave it back? That's crazy. Yeah, man. you know, yeah. yeah I mean, he can he rob a bank. A, and, uh, yeah, my bad. Like, yeah, my yeah, bad. Here yeah. you go. So but, I went to juvenile hall like for strong arm robbery, and that sounds crazy. Like, if if you knock down a Seven Eleven with a shotgun, it's it's a strong arm robbery. Wow. So even just the, that comparison. Yeah, is, like I chin checked a dude and took his huffy. You know what I mean? Like that's no huffy, yeah, that's man. a crazy comparison yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, I think I went for like a week or something. Mm -hmm. Again, and what were you? What was going through your head though? You weren't thinking like, because at least you felt bad at the end. You felt bad to return it. You weren't yeah. thinking anything different when you were going in just because you already felt that, that damn sorriness. You were yeah. like, fuck, I fucked up going yeah. in? Or you were still like, oh, fuck it. My only thought at that time was like, I'm going to shine for the homies right now. Damn. Like, you know, I, I, I yeah, need that pat yeah. on the back. Like, I need to show them. And this is not who I am, like, deep down. Right. Ultimately, I evolved into that person, to, mm -hmm. like, that raw, callous person. But this is early. Like, I'm still Brian James right mm -hmm. now. Like, I haven't fully 
immersed myself in this lonely character. Mm -hmm. I'm still developing this guy right now at this point, you know? Because my first instincts, like, uh, like I've always been like a loving, compassionate person. I just got lost in that, this sick, twisted character that I had developed, you know? So, um, yeah, I went to Juvenile Hall for a week. It, it, pure excitement, like, it's, it's the next step. Now, now, now I've done a little bit of time. Now I'm meeting, um, you know, other gang members from other yeah, areas. Man. You, know, you know, I'm fighting with enemies in, in, the, in the rooms and stuff like that. And I know I'm coming home to that fresh out of jail worship. I couldn't wait. I, I had seen homies come out of prison, yeah. and I seen like they're worshipped. Yeah, like, granted, it was only a week, but you know, yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. young, and a week when you're young is probably like the equivalent of a year, maybe or something like that. Is that right? Really? At that like? Well, at shit. That think age. about it. You got parties. You got a girlfriend, two girlfriends. Yeah. You just want to go home. You yeah, know, you're so 15, fucking week. You do a week. Yeah, like yeah. you know, again. Never told that story, but like I cried in juvenile hall. Like I that first to go week. Home. Really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Like, nice yeah. Time, you know? But um, I know what you mean. I, I think I got caught up the first time ever was like graffiti. I was hitting up on a fucking wall in the neighborhood. They busted me. They didn't nothing. I ended up getting a DA reject or some shit. I'm sitting there crying in the fucking oh, station. Yeah. I didn't know what how bad it really was. I'm thinking, bro, I'm gonna go to jail forever. Yeah, you don't fucking know. 13, yeah. 14 years old, you know. And I'm the loudest one. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, the, the yeah. loudest one of the room is the one that is the most scared. You know? I'll go fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you're over. Yeah, you're overcompensating. You're overcompensating. Yeah, yeah. You're overcompensating yeah. for that fear. Like, that part. Yeah. Yeah. So you got out, and you even then, how soon did you get back after you got out that first time? Back to the block. Oh, like I literally, like my grandparents picked me up, like begged me to go home. Like mm -hmm, I went home. Mm -hmm. I one clipped my head. The one the Ben Davison was back out. Like I, I needed, the, I needed that. Like I just got out. I, I was I was craving that 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 fresh out of jail worship, that attention that I knew I was gonna get. Were you already getting inked up at that time? No, I had got the only thing I had got was I had got a three dots on my face. Um that was the only thing I got. Which even that back in the day, motherfuckers would still look. Yeah, you know, I was like, loud. oh shit. Moment, yeah. yeah, I remember it was like three of us went, like my homie got a teardrop and the other one got the neighborhood and I got the three dots. Like Yeah, yeah. You know? I need to ask this question because I'm still lost till this day. What is like the symbolic, the symbolism behind that the kind three of dots? stuff. Three dots. Well, it could be three dots or even the teardrop. <clears throat> the teardrop. Well, the three dots is just mi vida loca, my crazy life. I, yeah, I guess it's a, a cultural thing. It doesn't yeah. really. It's not. You don't have to be a fucking killer to have it. It's no, just a cultural yeah, yeah. thing. Which is what it's everybody a, thinks. Like, it's yeah, not, if you have something here, oh, you're killing. Everybody thinks that. I didn't think that because yeah. I'm like not like. You know, but uh, that's what I'm saying. I ask yeah. that because people legit think that you have something here or you have something here. You're assumed to be a killer. And you don't I'm even trying have to be a gang member. Like everybody has the little like on their yep. hand or like on their elbow, like the first staple one in the classroom. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you don't necessarily even have to be like a part of that culture. Like, and it, I think it transcends like all uh, like Pretty nationalities. Much. I, yeah. it's like everybody kind of gets that. Mm -hmm. You know. In terms of the teardrop, I got it in prison. I got it. Uh, it reflects my life sentence. And reflects the loss of a homeboy of mine. Gotcha. And so many people. And actually, I'm getting tattooed move right now. I just did my third round at Homeboy Industries. Which I noticed, you, especially you from Hustocks. Yeah, I'm like, and I had I have look, these right here. Got you. Yeah, this is probably I got it last Wednesday. I got it. That's got, your first session? No, it's my third. Third one? Yeah, yeah. They're damn near gone. Yeah, yeah that's good. Too. I've been wanting them gone for so many years now. I got them when I was 18 years old. You know, when I first went in. Gotcha. So I've always and, and so that's what I was gonna ask. So your your run with twenty nine years in your run of going in and out the halls couldn't have been that long, because you had to have gotten busted pretty soon on in your story. No? Yeah, well, I went to um, I went to camp twice. I went to Challenger and I went to Camp Mendenhall. I did like eight months on those, and then you know like thirty days and violations and, and you know twenty days stuff like that. And then the final one was. Um, I, I can't even remember what the crime was. I, I was on the run, and I got arrested, and I went into court, and I remember the judge said, my grandparents were sitting in the back of the courtroom, and the judge says, I don't know why I'm doing this now with your record, but today is your lucky day. I'm going to release you today with a five-year YA joint suspension, which means this is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. If you ever come in front of my courtroom ever again, you're, you're going to YA for five years, no questions asked, mm -hmm. Okay. I got out on a Thursday, um, went to a party, celebrating my release on a Saturday. Probably the worst thing you can do, though, right? The parties, this is where my crime happened. Yep. I got arrested. Oh my I was God. sitting in front of that judge Monday morning with a murder charge. From Thursday till Monday. From Thursday. You can imagine what he said. 
after being hit with, um, it's your fucking lucky day. I'm right. giving you a chance. Yeah. You know? And he gave me a whole speech. He said, look, you got your grandparents back there. Like, uh, he goes, I have people that sit in my courtroom with nobody. Yeah, right. Like, you have people that take time. Like, mm-hmm. look at them back there. They have tears in their eyes. And you, ha- like, you have a, a good home to go to. That's why I'm giving you this opportunity. Did that one have the like the potential to be a crazy case, like a long term case? I should have been. I should have. I should have been in jail. Fuck. Yeah, because I, I I think I had like three felonies at that point. I had been on the run. Like they were knocking doors down looking for me. And okay, that's what it was. I was in a placement, and I AWOL from the placement. Mm. So they're already on you. And during the placement, you know, robberies yeah. and different Damn. things, shootings and stuff like that, investigations. And I had these three felonies. And uh, I don't know. I, I got released. It, it was crazy. Even the judge, like he he said, like I don't know why I'm doing this. To this day, do you think? Do, would you say you regret him releasing you or no? No, I I was gonna do life. There there's no way around it. Well, I, I was gonna I was gonna be dead or I was gonna do life. I I've thought about that so many times, and and I've been asked that um, question from different people. I was going to I was going to slam into that that wall hard regardless. That's crazy. That's, that's a crazy realization to come to. Yeah. yeah. Knowing damn well even if they let you out today, tomorrow, a week, if I do 2 years, I'm still going to be in the same bullshit, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um crazy crazy. So so shit, take us to the day, day of, you know. Um how so, you know, better yet, the morning of. Yeah. Let's talk about the morning of. When you're prepping <laughs> for your party, you know it's about to go down. Oh, you did yeah. say party. Yeah, yeah. Like, you well, know, what's the deal? The day started, like, I went to Magic Mountain, you know. Oh, oh shit. Man, me. Yeah, come let's, on. Yeah, let's go to Magic Mountain. And I went to Magic Mountain. Um, I, met, I met up with my girlfriend there and, like, two homeboys and, you know, a couple other people. We mm-hmm. went on rides. TLC was there that day. Um, TLC? Dang, that's all you know. TL? TLC. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it? Re- Re- Chile, yeah, 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 yeah. Waterfall. That's that's uh. That's I, I'm gonna wow. need some English, yeah, y'all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were an R and B group back in the old days. Back in the old days, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ask this guy what a payphone is. He don't know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I know what that is. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. They were like the cheetah girls of the nineties. Let me find out. Um, yeah. So wow, they were, the cheetah girls. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. So, so they they um they were performing. You know, we had a great day. And as we were uh, leaving the party, I got a page. A pager where these old oh, things. Shit, you were, <laughs> right, right. Um, What's a pager? Yeah. Old, and they uh, said, hey, uh, you know, there's going to be a party out in Silmar. Mm. You know, and everybody wants to see you. Let's go. Mm. So, um, you know, went back to the house. You know, do the whole ironing the clothes and, and get ready. You know, we met up at a park. Probably maybe about 30 of us. And, you know, we caravan to the party. And you know, it's a backyard party, you know. We're drinking, we know we're getting high. There's a bunch of different neighborhoods back there, and, and a skirmish happens inside um, the party. And uh, we decide, we says, Let, let's go. Uh, but, as a matter of fact, before we even went in, I remember they 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 went to, they wanted to search us, mm-hmm. and me on my you know, no, I'm imagine. a gangster. Yeah. You're not I touching me. That. You're not. T-. So I'm already like going in, you know, with this bravado and just completely ridiculous. So I already like the adrenaline was already mm-hmm. going. You know, I'm in I'm in full character. This this the lonely character I've created, and so when this happens back there, I said, "Man, let's go, let's leave." And as we're leaving, we're I'm, I'm all the way down the street. I'm in the car. We're backing out, and we see a fight break out on the street. Oh shit! That's the homies. Boom! So we drive up, and I run up, and and the fight is happening right there. And as soon as I run up, somebody is on top of my friend, and he's hitting them. Um, you know the things they lock the steering wheels with? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little yeah. Sticks. yeah. yeah. Like, like the like, little red thing where it goes yeah, small it goes big across. and you just lock it. Yeah, yep. he's hitting him with one of those. That's fucking yeah. heavy. That's a big metal yeah. object. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, as soon as I ran up to the scene, um, you know, everybody's fighting. It's just it's chaos everywhere. Right. There, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I pulled out the knife, and I just started swinging it at this guy. Um there's not much as I reflect back on it now. There, I, I I don't have much, like memory, like much detail, but I can say like, um, th- there's a lot of uh, regret. There's a lot of anguish because, like, this person was entirely undeserving of that. Um, nothing he did or ever could have done um, deserved like what me and my friends did to him. You know, because 
five of us were ultimately arrested for the crime. Holy shit. And, and you know, coming to terms with that, like years later, understanding, you know, the suffering, you know, it, there's a permanence to that. Like, you know, there was, there's no coming back. That's what drives me every day. And ultimately what led to my change in life. But yeah, um, we took this guy's life that day and I didn't know. And somebody else got assaulted. I got a charge with an assault too. And I, I, I didn't take part in it directly. You know, it, it, I, I hold the belief that if you belong to a neighborhood and, and, and they kill somebody, you could be 100 miles away. You're still sanctioning that because yeah. you're representing the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it, it's a big part. Like if, if, if you're going to get out of that lifestyle, you need to disconnect. You know, you can't play both sides of it. So while I didn't directly participate, I got charged with it ultimately and convicted. But I remember the next day, um, it was a Sunday, uh, I went to church with my grandparents and I remember in the morning we went to the donut shop and I'm flipping through the metro section of the, of the newspaper. I'm trying to see if somebody died. But what was running through your head at church? Yeah. Like normally when you step into those places, you feel some shit and then knowing what had just happened, did anything cross your head? Like what the fuck, I'm really sitting in church and people don't even know what just happened. Yeah, no, night. literally. Yeah, and I, I, I remember I told my grandparents and my mom after church, like, something mm. happened last night. And I told them, I, I don't know, but I think we hurt somebody. You know, I didn't get into details. But, yeah, I remember sitting there, like, I think I did have, like, a moment of clarity in that time. Like, dude, what are you doing? Like, right. Like, it just got real last mm -hmm. night, you know? It, it just really got real last night. And I didn't know what happened. It was after church that I got the phone call that said, hey, um, they got 10 homeboys in the police station. Somebody died last night. He goes, pack your bags, let's roll. And I'm like, I just, on. I just came off the run, like, yeah, mm. I just, can't, I like, and that that takes so much out of you, like emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait and see what happens. So as we're driving home from church, I'm I'm in the back seat, my grandparents in the front, I'm in the back with my mom, and we turn the corner to our street, and I see Channel Seven, and I see Channel Eleven news right there in front of your house, on the corner, oh, and shit. then the whole street is just lined with cops. Wow. And I and I tell my grandpa, like, but just keep driving. I don't know what I was going to do. Right, like, right. Brian, like, it, the gigs up. Like, we pulled in the driveway. They swarmed me. They arrested me. And they said, ah, it's just a probation search. And I said, okay. So they took me to the police station. And as soon as they closed the door, they're like. Yeah, right. Folsom, San Quentin, like, you're done. Like, everybody told on you, you know. And the there was always a part that, like, I was just reminded of it from you know a few of my friends that were there at the time they had everybody cuffed up on the remember those metal benches that yep. are just all handcuffs there's like 10 of us they had like a bar underneath and that's where yeah. they handcuffed you so you're sitting down on a little wood block yeah and then, then there's a wall so they brought me around and they cuffed me up on the end and i remember i leaned forward and i told everybody in the line i said hey just keep your fucking mouth <laughs> shut and we'll ride this right. and right when i said that the detective leaned around the corner and he said if you listen to him then you're all gonna go to jail with him. <laughs> I was like, damn, you know. Did 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 you feel? What did you feel? Did you look on their faces and you fucking knew maybe one or two? I knew, yeah. I mean, oh, I, I always man. knew that, like, you know, a, a lot of dudes were not built for that, right? Like, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, ultimately, I was proven right on that, you know. So they, you know, they did the whole thing. They separated mm -hmm. us all. Um, we know. How, what how old are you Everybody? when this is all going down? I'm 16. You're 16. Yeah. Uh, Holy shit. Like, that might just hit puberty, bro. Still a fucking That's baby. That's fucking crazy. You know? yeah. Still a baby. Yeah. Six fucking teen? Come on, man. Yeah. You're still you're still learning the ins and outs and of everything. You like... That's fresh. Fuck, I... And I think the only reason is, I, like, I was wholeheartedly committed to this stuff. Like, even at that time, there wasn't a, damn, what am I involved with? It was mm. more like, damn, like, I'm about to get that interrogation. I'm gonna hold my mud right now. Yeah. Like, it... it I'm going to make this collect call. What's up, big dog? Yeah, they got me here. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing. I'm yeah. cool. Don't worry about it. I'm cool. I'm yeah, going to write like, it out. Yeah, I know the script, and I'm going to stick to it. Man. You know? Were you already thinking? Because you know how the judge beforehand has said, you come back five years. Were you thinking, all right, I'm going to get five years for this? Or did you already know, no, I'm, this is way further than five years? No, my thought at the time was, I'm going to get life as a juvenile. I'm going to get out when I'm 25. So, mm. what was it, so the whole YA thing was still going on? Where dudes, you you seen dudes coming home for at 25? Yeah, like from they were a juvenile M sentence. Yeah, oh, okay, they, M yeah, numbers. They were yep. M numbers. And I remember I only too, heard about it. Yeah, yeah, and when I went to juvenile hall too, there was an, an, like a sick sense of like pride and accomplishment when I got the orange jumpsuit. 
That's like a compound or something? Yeah, like the, like bigger the sentences? compound wasn't developed at the time. Okay. They had just broken ground on it, but they were called high-risk offenders. Mm. So, you know, murder, attempted murders, uh, you know, things like that. They wore the orange jumpsuit. And, you know, you're... That's so you guys were the big dogs. Yeah, was the, the big the, dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hall, you know, and, and I had always kind of looked at those guys like, you know, I didn't... I don't know. I didn't know if I necessarily wanted to be one of them, but right. I was like, damn. Those are real. You yeah. thought it was cool. It was badass seeing yeah. them, you know, escorted or whatever. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, you're is. like, that's a hard motherfucker right there, you know. I'm, yeah. I can easily see being that age, not knowing any better, um, not having experience and yet knowing that it ain't a fucking turnaround. These fucking kids are probably going to live out a long sentence, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. And they had, and knowing like they had committed like the ultimate act of allegiance, mm. like to the gang, you know. And there was that fear and respect and like you know, all the things that I was craving in my life. So they took three of us there to HRO. The other two were adults, so they went to the county jail. And when I went to my hearing, that's when they said, uh, they're going to try you as an adult. And how was like 16, 16, really? really huh? Yeah. Well, it was called a fitness hearing. Yep, yep. I guess if, uh, you know, you're, you're pro- there's like five components, like your, your arrest history, um, a bunch of things. Hmm. But... I failed them all. So they ultimately, and I remember they asked me, how do you want to plead? I said, guilty. What the fuck? Because I no wanted way. to be, I wanted to get out when I was 25. The judge said, you can't plead guilty. How do you plead? I said, guilty. Where's your public defender? Well, he that's what he you was know? saying. Oh. Yeah, he was saying, just plead guilty. Maybe like, it'll work. And they were like, you can't plead that's guilty. That's fucking crazy. That yeah. reminds me of Jared's shit right yeah, there. Like, yeah. come on, dude. Me and him had that conversation like when I first met him on the tier too. Like, if, I don't recall if he did, but I remember we were talking about that. Like, at the time, you're like, try as an adult. Like, I can't mm-hmm. even go to a club. I can't like buy beer. I can't yeah. do nothing. But now. and then it like coax you into saying, "Fuck it, I'm guilty. I'll go ahead and take it." Not yeah. even knowing what that means, you know. So you go through the hearing, and they say we're gonna bound you over to adult court. So now, um, you know, you're in juvenile hall, and the, and the LA County Jail bus comes. They shackle you up, and they put you in the back, and they drive you to adult mm. like superior court, and you know you get arraigned. And they're essentially you're getting treated as an adult. Straight up adult. Adult time, you know, they're talking. We were facing 55 to life. Um, you know, we went, we offered him a deal. We, me and my co-defendant says, we'll give you 25 years with 80% and two strikes. And he said, nah, we, they want a life sentence. Because at the time, there was a buzzword called um, super predators. Mm-hmm. Oh, crime bill, huh? Yeah, it was that. I, I think Hillary Clinton coined the, the term yep. super predators. And they were saying basically like, if, if if they're committing these type of crimes at 16, just imagine what the yeah. hell they're going to be at 25. You know, so we need to just discard them and, mm-hmm. and kick them out of the world forever. What? Because that it, was happening? In some yeah, that was yeah. a train of thought back then. That's why a lot of people are they're like, fuck it. Clinton was president. He was a damn. But, but a lot of people don't realize, even to this day, I heard, I thought they had let out all the three strikers in 1994, that crime bill. Basically, three strikes, you're done. There was so many fucking people getting busted for panties, heroin, just personal use shit. You know, it, it ruined a lot of fucking families, you know? Yeah. Everybody got hung. When, when I was in juvenile hall, I was in East Lake in KO. If they tried you as an mm-hmm. adult, they take you over there. There was 95 of us in there. 92 people got life sentences. All Jesus Christ. All Dang. kids, huh? Oh, yeah. Damn. Double life, life sentence. People just coming back, just hung. Done. Done. Still in there today. Damn. Real quick, what was what was your experience when you actually first heard like what you were fighting, like what what was going through your mind then? Uh, that it it rocked me that one because you know they're talking double digit years and like yeah. a sentence with a letter on it, right. you know, and there there was no remorse yet. I hadn't developed any remorse for the crime, you know. It was all me, me, me. You know, they're trying to railroad me. They're trying to do me, and everybody's out to get me and. You know, he knew what he signed up for and just no no responsibility mm-hmm. whatsoever. But uh, I was a little shook. But there, you know, if I'm being like completely transparent, there was a, like a bit of excitement to it, mm. you know, because uh, like I said, it's the ultimate act of allegiance. And and, right. and I, like I'm fighting that case. You know, that's it's it's it just adds to your stripes you know when you're in the madness i call it you're just in this fucking madness yeah, in yeah. your own world you you yeah crazy how sickening that is and even no one, just you know, saying it now it's, I, I can't even comprehend right. like it's insane man you know but i think that that goes back to that point where there's a big fucking difference between somebody that's 16 and especially the brian now at 45 yeah there's no fucking way you're gonna think the same way you Not were thinking close. at that age even if you didn't want to even if you wanted to remain in that mentality 
you're going to fucking grow up. Why? That's just how genetics work, biology works. Your brain is going to, you know, develop more. Yeah, and you acquire, like, information. You get, you get a little bit more life under yeah. your belt. Like, your priorities and your perspective changes. And at that point, like, you're you're not even planning the next day. You're just, it's it's that moment. What do Fuck. I need in that yeah. moment? I need that love. Whatever it takes, I don't care. I need that attention. Whatever's going to get it for me. Like, just impulsivity, like, at its highest level. That's, yep. I'm over here thinking too. What are your grandparents thinking at the same time? I thought about that too when you that. said they were like, there crying. I'm like, they, man, poor. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the yeah. grandparents oh, too. God. You know, they yeah. ride it out with you, and they're already older, and they got to go through that shit. You know. Yeah, and it's man. In my grandparents' eyes, like I've never done a thing wrong in my entire of course. life. Course. Like they just see like like as Brian, the, the Brian, yeah. the little basketball mm-hmm. player, and. You know, in their mind, they've all everything was justified. Well, you know, he hit the kid because of this, or mm-hmm. well, that guy was hitting his friend mm-hmm. with a with a bar lot from the from the steering wheel. He's being a great friend, like, you know. And these are the things probably they gotta tell themselves to to maintain their own sanity. But as That's I deep. realize now, like, um, you know, looking back in reflection, like, I watched them over the years, like through visiting, like the wrinkles and the hair turning Whoa. gray, like as they traveled these thousands of miles up and down the grapevine, like I, I saw the smiles that were forced, you know, the the, the look of trying to be strong. So I like, I, I'm very aware of like what I dragged my grandparents through and my family. Did moms and pops ever get back into the picture? So my dad died um, in his addiction, the, the, the day before I got sentenced. Damn, that's a cold shot. Oh. But I, I, I really didn't have much of a relationship with my father. So it was like during a visit, my mom was like, um, it was like the middle visit. She's like, by the way, like your dad just died. Fuck. I was like, damn. Okay. That's one so, way to go yeah, about it. So yeah. how's my brother and them doing? Like it, it was just like just a quick. passed over that. Yeah. It's like a. Yeah. Ultimately, it, it, it the, the, the trippy part of it about is my dad, his absence was my entire life. Mm-hmm. But yeah. his, he affected me probably more than his absence and probably affected me as as, mm. as a child more than anything even in his absence mm-hmm. you know because that void you know was yep. something that that always um was inside of me and it it, it came up for me years later mm-hmm. when i was 35 you know these, these all these feelings about my dad and, and i had to deal with it but um yeah he, no 100 I, I have a feeling if you would have gotten validation <laughs> with pops it could alleviate a lot of the other things, you know. You were seeking that the one validation from from dad, from mom, is you know fucking worth ten times getting it from the homeboy. You just since sure. you never had it, you didn't know, so you were going yeah. with this validation. And I know? had it from my grandparents, but there was always that like generational gap. Oh that yeah. shit, they're yeah. older. Yeah, that kind of um, things got lost in that right okay. there. You know, you, you kind of need that direct. Like there was a link in the chain that that was missing right there. And I was aware it was not missing. And my belief was that he didn't want me. Like, Damn. like, what's wrong with me? If your own dad doesn't want you, like, you, you got to be like mm-hmm. a fucked up little something. You know, so yeah. there, there was always that component to it, which was probably the biggest point. Like, how, how come he doesn't want me? Like, what's wrong with me? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't fully understand, like, the nature of addiction at that time, that he was fighting his own battles that had nothing to do with me. You, you know? came into that realization in hindsight, right? When I became a heroin addict myself, okay. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Ain't that a bitch, huh? You going through it, and now you really see clear as day, holy shit, was I wrong to think that way. Yeah, here I you am know? doing yeah. to my own family exactly what he did to me. Fuck. And that's when a sense of, like, um, like closeness with my father happened. Like, uh, somewhat, like, finally understanding him, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even my mom. You Even know, like, moms, huh? Okay. I get it. Like, they... they they loved me like as much as they were capable of doing, but you, you know that heroin addiction. You got to keep throwing coal on that train because once you stop, like it's it's bad. Damn. You know, yeah. Did that transition was a was the heroin heroin addiction transition into when you got sentenced to like that was still part of your life? No, uh, by the time when I got arrested, I was just a lot of methamphetamine. That that was mm. my drug at, that I was using at the time. The heroin came when I got incarcerated. Cause that's you know the most the arch typical prison drug the, yeah, the that's galitos the most popular and thing. Exactly, yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so yeah. I'm curious to know what what it was like going in there because it was your first time actually going into a prison right before yeah. it was just juvenile halls and yeah. stuff like that yeah so or maybe how, how did the sentencing work 
and then we'll we can okay yes yeah, right? so, yeah it's good let's do that oh yeah. so i mean we went to trial what did you ultimately get sentenced yeah, yeah we went to trial um the trial played out over the course of two weeks um the jury deliberated for three days and they came back with the guilty verdict um on second degree murder and assault with gbi great bodily injury and um during the sentencing phase, it was 20 to life for me and 20 to life for my crimey. Mm-hmm. So 15 to life for the for the second degree murder, three years for the GBI, and, and two years for the weapon. Mm-hmm. You know? So out of those 10, 10 of your homeboys that they picked up, only two of you guys end up getting charged? No, there were five There were five life sentences hand, handed out. Fuck, that's three a Three adult cool shot, life sentences man. and two juvenile life sentences. Five of your people just gone, gone. one shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody tested for... All five, yeah. like all witnesses attested for all five, and just like yeah, it, it was a strong case. No it, way. It, it happened at a house party, so it's, it's like yeah, there, there were people. You fucking get everybody at the party, and everybody just say, "Yep, he was there. That was him. Yeah. I seen him. I don't know." Yeah, yeah. It, it was. I was trying to. Um, I went for a heat of passion. That was my defense because at first I was playing like I wasn't there. I didn't do it, and then. <laughs> Just the the evidence was overwhelming, you mm-hmm. know. He was there. Yeah, like Fuck. I was there, so I tried to do a heat of passion, you know. The fight broke out, and I panicked, and again, taking no responsibility, just worried about myself, trying to get myself out, not concerned in any kind of way, you know, what I'm dragging my family through, what I'm dragging this victim's family through. Yeah, I made him relive it all over again, which is like something that I, I, I'm extremely regretful for. Through that trial, you mean? Yeah. Like having them go through trial as opposed to what would have been the other option, taking a deal or something? I mean, if I could go back today, the person I am today, I'm going to stand up and take responsibility okay. because mm-hmm. it's it's bad enough. I, uh, I Like I took their child, I took their brother, yeah. their, their cousin, their friend. Now I'm making them relive the whole thing mm-hmm. over again. Like you got to sit in the back of the courtroom and you got to see autopsy pictures. Pictures and, and uh, shit, yeah, right? Yeah, it's brutal. You know, it's brutal. When... Um, uh, 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 a, a real man, a real person stands up and says, you know what? I made a terrible decision. Mm-hmm. And I know these consequences are going to be severe, but, uh, you know, I, I, th- this is the least I can give this family. Right. You know? But uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I wasn't there at that time. I was I was selfish, um, you know. That, that, that's dope that you even touch on it now, though. A lot of the times I feel like uh, that's one of the reasons why it's hard to push policy because we always neglect the victims. Now there's a shift in it, right? But yeah. they got to have some type of, um, you know, some type of, uh, I don't know, shit, just some closure, some, some, something going, you know, where we're, we're kind of. That's kinda... why I like the, um, the, like the healing dialogue um, program because e- even in the court, like it says, okay, the aggressor over here, the victims over here, you guys don't look at each other, you guys don't talk. You know, so there's, there's yeah. no healing involved. Yeah, just, that's, you're going yeah. to jail for life, and okay, we gave him life. There, there, there's no healing. There's no right. conversation, and, and nothing gets had. Where, whereas now, you know, there's been, a, like you said, a shift, yeah. in, which I think is at least helpful, you know, because the victims, they need a voice, man. Like, you know, and, and I advocate for them today. That's right. Nice. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, so where are we at now? So we're at... Uh, you get sentenced to second degree plus the GBI. Yeah. What happens now? It's like fuck it. You're you're catching the chain at this point, yeah, or 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 are you 18 at this point? You're already 18. Yeah, I had just turned 18. Um, I had got kicked out of juvenile hall. They sent me to Linwood uh, just for fighting and stuff like that. So the second I turned 18, I, I transitioned straight. Got you. And Linwood now is a woman's spot. I never knew, and I always thought it was always a woman. Then a lot of my older homies even they would be like, "Bro, that used to be a county jail." That used yeah. to be a, a men's jail or whatever. Yeah, it was a men's jail. Right off the 105. Module. Oh, yeah. did they? Okay. Yeah, yeah all juvenile module. And the second you turn 18, you you know they send you to the county, you go through 9500, and mm-hmm. I immediately caught the chain to Wasco. Reception, huh? Yeah, yep. Wasco reception. And um, I'll never forget, my counselor called me in. You know, we do the intake, the whole thing. And he says, uh, at the time, they, they had separated prisons into a 180 structure and a 270 okay. structure. The 180 structure is a lot more security. It's a lot more confi- confined. The movement is a lot more restricted. And it was developed for, like, um, like hardened gang members, mm. like shoe kickouts, um, you know, coming in for gang murders. And he said, unfortunately, you're going to be a, a 180 because of your age, you're young, it's a gang murder. He goes, but hopefully um, you can go to like New Folsom or, or something. Hopefully you don't go to Salinas Valley. 
because it's just opening and it, it, it's it's going to be a bloodbath. Over so this was what, 93, 94, this probably 90, at this uh, point? 94, and then okay. 94. And um, <laughs> like a week later, the bag comes, like I'm going to Salinas Valley. So, Holy oh, shit, yeah. after she just what? pre-gamed you about yeah. fucking Salinas yeah, Valley yeah. and you're going there. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Fuck. again, like in my mind, like, okay, like... So if this is where the hardest of the hardest are at, I'm going. And I'm going. And I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Uh, internally, shitting my pants. Correct. Oh, right. 100%. Like, yeah. Trying to, like, psych myself up, trying to work myself up. Mm-hmm. But, like, there's a bit of excitement. Like, I get to call now, like, well, I'm going to Salinas. And, right. You know? Oh, like, right. So you still had that whole, like, you know, I still got to oh, prove myself, like, the whole way. All the issues that, like, plagued my childhood that led to my incarceration were still like prevalent in my life and like if not even worse they're growing stronger like i'm nurturing all this negativity so i'm just i'm evolving now lonely's himself yeah. like like I, i'm a i'm not a good person at this time like i'm a dangerous individual at this time with with like a really screwed up mind state and i'm on drugs so like there's i have nothing good going for me i'm completely selfish all i care about is my image and promoting that so I go to Salinas Valley and like, you know, the 180s, it's just a huge wall. And, it, and when the gate opens, you just walk through and you're on the yard and like, you just, you just walk through, you know, there's a hundred bulldogs, you know, there's a hundred North Daniels, two, three hundred Serenios and the Bloods and the Crips. And it's just like, fuck, just walk towards where the homies are on the handball wall over there, you know? You, you knew to do all of that already? Yeah. Well, I, I came on the bus. Shot? Yeah, I came on the bus. Okay. Yeah, like, I remember there was the dude, Little Man from Orange County. He was like, just, just roll me. I got you. I got you. Yeah, you know, and he's the little homie Lonely, and we, me and, you know, do Sharky from Pomona. Start meeting people, and then... Sharky? Yeah. Was that? He's still in there. So oh, in general, nah. that's probably like a common name. So okay. we've met yeah. here a bunch of Sharkies. <laughs> yeah, at a point. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so everyone has... The, it's like the joke. What do they say? They call the homies uh, the seven dwarfs. Yeah, Grumpy, yeah. midget. We Everything ends in a Y. Yeah, so yeah. it's a recycled seven names. Seven dwarfs? You know? <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah. That's Dopey, pretty funny. Grumpy. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So um, you, you've heard that name before for sure, but different, different. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck. So you land there. What Did it trip you out? Fucking concrete, guard tower, uh, uh, yeah. no warning shots, uh, uh, all that. What were your, yeah, your I, I, I'm, 18 years yeah, old? I'm taking it all in. And at that point, like, um, it's a case study for me. Like, I'm, I'm just mm. observing everything. I'm trying to emulate everything because I want to fit in. I don't, I don't want, like, right. as it is, like, I, I stick out like a turd in a punch bowl. I'm a white boy, like, in right. the middle of, like, a lot of homies, you know? Um all the jokes come, you know, Miklo and like I heard. Oh you know, shit, yeah. Miklo? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. being thrown around at <laughs> yeah. that time? Yeah, that was, <laughs> it was like the joke. Like, you know, you hear all the jokes, like, you know. Um, Can I find out what that is? Because I don't know. I want to no. laugh, y'all. I want to laugh. We're going to no. yeah, we're gonna have to Google all kinds of shit. Yeah. Like, Miklo? Hey, that, no, Miklo. Miklo. Blood in, blood out? Yeah, yeah. No the, way. The white oh, boy. That's a nah. hood classic, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a hood classic, but I don't, I don't remember any of that's that, bro. That's fucking yeah. crazy. I do not remember that. You know what? I tip my hat, though. That's a fucking good thing, you know? Yeah. Because you didn't go chasing that shit from the exactly, movie, you know? Exactly. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like my whole thing is just studying and watching and learning, keeping my mouth shut, you know? And I share this story a lot, like, because it, it's a critical moment in my life. Um, so this is about the second week that, that I'm at Salinas. And we go out to the yard, and I had a homeboy Chino there that, you know, he took me under the wing. And we're sitting on the handball wall, and he taps me. And he goes, like, you know, look over there. And I'm leaning mm-hmm. against the wall like this, and I'm watching. And I see two homies walk up behind another dude. They're playing baseball. And one of them swings a baseball bat, like, as Full blown home run swing it and connects at the base of oh this dude's gosh. skull, and the dude drops, and then two other dudes come from the side, homies, and just start stabbing him. Jesus Christ! You know? And in that moment, doing? like I'm rocked to my, like I'm watching this, mm-hmm. and like I'm fighting tears. I'm not, mm-hmm. built, I'm not built for this. Mm-hmm. Like I'm from Northridge, like you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like yeah. you know, um, every part of me wants to just like look away, run away, because the tower doesn't see it. it it's happening. That's the worst, right? You hear them screaming and shit, and you're like, no one's going to help. Apparently yeah. not. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you hear the noise. Because when you're on the streets, it's easy. You're surrounded by homeboys, and you're high, and it's the right. moment. I'm dead sober. You know, I'm like, I'm in a new environment. Mm-hmm. I'm already, like, but I'm telling, I'm having this conversation with myself, and I'll never forget, I'm telling myself, 
don't you fucking look away. You better watch that shit and keep watching it because this is your life now. You better get used to it. This is your life now. And I watched the whole thing play out. And I realized now that, like, that was me in that moment, like, literally embracing hopelessness. Yeah. Embracing the fact, like, my life has um, been limited to just watching, like, people just brutally murdered on a yard. And that, that, that was, like, a terrible, terrible moment for me right there. You know, because nobody should have to embrace that hopelessness. You know, there was no glimmer of hope. Right. And literally, like two weeks later, I go to what they call a doc hearing, a documentation hearing. It's basically you sit down in front of three parole board members and they say, OK, in 20 years, you're going to come before us. This is the blueprint. What we want from you. Yeah. A GED. We want you to get a couple of trades. We want you to stay out of trouble. No write ups. Um get some positive chronos. They outlined like about five things. And I said, if, if, if I check all those boxes and I do all the things that you guys want, can I go home one day? And you told them that? I asked them. Oh, man. Because I had just witnessed this. So I'm already thinking like, okay, maybe this ain't for me. Like right, that right. just rattled me. So I asked them if I'm trying to like find a way out at this point, mm-hmm. you know, like maybe if I can, I'll, I'll change some things. When I asked them that, they laughed at me and they told me your parole officer hasn't even been born yet. Fucking dirtbags. Oh my yeah. gosh. So in that moment right there, it was like, okay, fuck it. This is me. This this is my life. And that was the moment, like, that's when that's when like the moment the world lost me, like I was gonna say forever. That's when like there was no hope. Like um, I was assigned to school. I refused to go to school. I refused any job. Like, for what? For what? I'm never going to be free. I'm never going to work. Everything I need to know is right here on this yard. You know? And um, I... I, I it it sounds right. insane, but it's very fucking understandable given the sentence you just got, given how young you were, yeah. given the fact that at that point, lifers weren't even talked about going home. At that, at that time. And they call you like you're you doing know? all day. You're washed up. You know, right. you're done. There's all these yep. terms that are being thrown away. Like, even the CO is like, what do you want a GED for? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like, what? It, for what? You know, it, 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 there's no hope. Like, there's literally nothing. That, that makes it, like, think about how deep that is. You're, you're there all day. Your mentality is, I don't need a fucking GED. I'm not going home. That's, like, super deep, bro. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Any education I need is, like, in the art of war, right. or like guerrilla warfare, yeah. or anatomy, you know, things that are going to be useful in surviving in prison and thriving in prison. And that's a dark, that's a dark place. Like, I was in a dark place right there. And that's, it was around that time that I reached out to heroin to, to cope with. And I'm thinking also because I know, especially when going through something like that, I'm sure mental health wise, did suicide ever come across your mind? I, I had um I had considered it by that point like a couple times like throughout my life um, once when I was younger mm-hmm. it never like evolved past like just an initial thought um, you know later on you know when we get to that point in the story I'll share where like it got really close but yeah yeah definitely it takes a lot to do that like mm-hmm. um I was I, I was so selfish at that point like I, I probably and I just didn't have what it takes to do it but I remember thinking to myself if I could just snap my fingers and just be gone like I would have definitely have snapped my fingers you know That's a crazy way to look at it you yeah. know It's sad to to see that even then there is no hope like I, n- there's literally like only 1% in this world know, that would ever bro, feel that way that, like, that there's the zero hope in your life and there's zero way of getting out I'm tripping out because I only like I don't I don't think you guys understand, but I'm able to look into into Brian's eyes and see him say this stuff, and it's crazy. I'm just envisioning him, like see it all over again, yeah. and it's tripping me out. Like I'm just like, yo, he's passionate about it, and it's like, I just feel like I'm living it with you right now, yeah. and it just trips me on. It hurts me deep down because like fuck, but it's at the end of the day, it's understanding like these are the repercussions that comes with the life that you took with place, that crime. you took part in. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I don't. But I, I, you know, which is the good thing about it is now, like, because there was no oper- there was no such thing as any kind of group at that time either. Mm-hmm. You know, there were there was zero groups. 
There was okay. nothing to be had. Like they would throw a handball and a basketball in the yard and say yard recalls in, in, in four hours, you know? So, I mean, to this day, like I deserve the sentence, you know, I deserve the time. I don't, I don't know how to equate what I did with the time. You know, um, I, I, I never said I deserve to go home when I went for the parole board because I'm deserving of nothing. I was just asking for grace and mercy and trying to like prove myself worthy of it. Mm -hmm. But I, there, there has to be an opportunity to at least better yourself. Like, you know, it, even if you're going to, I know guys with life without parole that have changed their life. Jared talked about it on his podcast. Like, right. And I saw him like with 147 years to life, like living a, like a pro social life in prison, like being a man of service to people with right. zero opportunity of going home. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, what you need to highlight there in general, right, is is how fucking stand up an individual has to be in order to go that route, knowing that you're still going to do 20, 30 years. Yeah. You know, so to kind of come to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm going to do right. Fuck this. It doesn't matter if I get out or not. I, I just need to fix my shit. You know, I, had to get, I need to get my life together. It, it's crazy that, that somebody is that strong willed to make that yeah. happen. You know, and. and, and the external pressure that you get, man, you know, oh like, man. like I heard him, and, and 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 early on it might change too. Like, but what, you're, you're not gonna go home. What's the point? Like, you don't understand. Right. Like, yeah. like I I can't look in the mirror anymore. Like this this shit doesn't make sense to me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just lost my grandparents. Like, I've, I've I've dedicated my whole life to this, and what do I have to show for it? Like nothing. Right. Like nothing. You know. So, like, for somebody to do it, you know, like how he did, and like so many, when you're still getting these, like, these, these voices on the outside, like, what are you doing? It doesn't make sense. Like, because something shifts on the inside. Yeah. And just how you would look a, a life sentence dead in the eye and not blink. Yeah. It, it's the same way. Like, this, mm -hmm. is, this is how I'm going to live. You're just shifting that energy to the positive. So, in, in that sense, it, it, it does make sense to me, you know? 100%. Uh, what other experiences did you have going, let's say the first, like, or once, like, how were you counting your time? Like, were you counting your time this whole that, time? Yeah, like, were question, you, shit. like, counting these days or were you just like, no. I'm going with life, man? Yeah, how do you break up 29 years? Right. You know? Um, through music. Like, I, like to this okay. day, I, I don't, like, time lost all meaning for mm -hmm. me. Like, it didn't, it didn't really matter. Like, to trip, I'm coming up on my first Christmas. And I was just telling my girlfriend, like, Christmas never, it didn't have a meaning for me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, like, I'm, tr I'm, re like, I'm trying to find meaning in it now. Right. Like, I love being with my family. I love spending time, you know, with my girlfriend and her family. But, like, connecting it to Christmas, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's weird, you know. I, I guess if you haven't had the experience of being a lifer or, or spending, like, a long term, it wouldn't make sense. But... So yeah, there's no time, but it was always music. So when I when I'm thinking back to a time like, um, remember when when Gwen Stefani broke up with No Doubt or you know what I mean? Right, or, right. Remember uh, back to the hotel like mm -hmm. that's you know we were doing that back when. Uh, yeah, I know No Doubt. Just saying, all right. Yeah. So don't be bullshitting me on that one, all right? Yeah, <laughs> rock band or something. I know No Doubt. I all right. know No yeah. Doubt. <laughs> that was back in the days when Nelly had uh, you know country grammar or something like right, that. Right, right. You know? So everything was connected to me to this day through, through music. Through music. Yeah, yeah. That was like an error. Every type of some sure. a song will come in and you're like, fuck, I remember those days. That was when I was here or yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. What about the technology? Did you trip out that you started with the cassettes and then yeah. CDs and then the Zenith TVs and then yeah. the see-throughs right. and then the flat screens? Yeah. Um, yeah, the first thing was, um, I'll never forget, like I had... Tupac's when the, my first year in prison, all eyes on me came out, and I had it on tape, and I used to listen to it on my Sony Walkman every hey. night. To this day, I say that all eyes on me literally got me through my first year in prison. Right, like I would just be overcome with so many different emotions and things going on inside of my mind. At the end of the day, I climb up on my rack, I put my Sony headphones on, and just play it all the way through. Yeah. Uh. I, this is kind of a personal. This is a question. I don't know if you can answer this kind of stuff, but I, I, mean, I mean, I'm just willing. I'm, sure. I'm gonna throw it out. When did you start participating in the programming of being incarcerated? And what about it, what I mean by that is like, yeah, yeah. Like when did you start participating? If you know what I mean, like you know, this like in, in the criminal taking, functions? exactly, like taking action. Oh, what? day one, day one. So you're part of it from day one, like yeah. That? I, so I, you shook it off, and then you're like, I'm gonna jump into it. Yeah. Well, like after the, you, you I'm said a youngster, you, I have yeah. a life sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. I'm white, so like, 
use me. I'm ready to go. Like, I wanted to prove myself. So as soon as you got off the bus, you had to prove yourself right then and there? No, I, I never, that's the thing I always say. Like, a lot of people ask me, like, <laughs> with the Miklo, did you have to do double and, like, right, you know, the whole thing? Right, right, like, right. No. Nobody, like, it was never, like, imposed on me or nothing. It was me uh, feeling I had to overcompensate. Mm. It was it was always myself, like, thinking I, I had to do extra. Um, everything I ever done, I raised my hand for. Like, I was never approached, uh, like, hey, we need this. Like, I raised my hand for everything I did. So I got a job early on in the kitchen. And in the kitchen, you got, you know, you can move around. You can go to different buildings, and you, and you go to doors, doors. So immediately... You know, running dope and messages. Oh, take this, oh, take wow. that. Okay. And it yeah. felt like, it felt so amazing to like get something from point A to point B and come back like, homie, it's done. The accolade that you get yeah. from it. Like, yeah. hey, big dog, he, he's good. He, he you he's know, solid. He, like, yeah. he, 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 he can move it from place to place. What kind of respect were you getting from that? Was like, hey, here's like a, you know, a pack of something or here's like this or something like, what was payout looking like for something like that? Um, gracias. Ah. That was it. And that meant the world. That, right, that was like a right. hundred dollar bill. I with a with a with a little brocha stroke, you know, yeah, yeah, good looking out, homie. Right. Like, Thank you. Know, you like, oh, <laughs> you're on top of the world anytime, yeah, yeah. anytime here, anytime. Like, you know what I mean? And um, uh, I I share this story too that you know I I, I put this sureño on a trece on my eyes. I went out to the yard, probably. I hadn't been in prison like four months, and this is something you have. You earned. when you had it, you got that three, four months in. Yeah, well, I went Holy out to the shit. yard and, and I talked to 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 one of the homies that you know he was in a position of authority right there, and I told him, man, I want to I want to blast it on you, you know what I mean? Right, right. I, I you know I'm a white boy, I don't want there to be no mistakes. I no want to confusion, wreck my, huh? You know, and and mm. I wanted to look tough, you know. Mm -hmm, I wanted to, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'm 18, I don't I don't got a hair on my ass, like you know, and like so I I want to at least like toughen myself up. S skinnier too. Like Skinny yeah, Bone Jones yeah. type of deal? Well, you know, a little cut. Like, okay, I, I was okay. a little workout fanatic. Hey. And he goes, I mean, you can't, you know, this is not something you just throw in your face. Mm. You know I mean? This is something that, that you got to work up to, yeah. you know? I said, all right. I went back to the cell, and I told my cell, like, fuck it, put it on me, you know? And, and hey, real quick, knowing that he can get in trouble, too, for fucking... Uh, I don't know if he could get in trouble, but he could. I definitely could. Oh, 100%. Or, yeah, yeah. Or I could get put to work, right. which was, you know, ultimately the case. So I walked out there and he see me, he goes, man, you little motherfucker. Like, ah. What did I tell you? And I was like, I'm ready to go. Like, mm -hmm. let's give me something. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready to put in where I'm ready to earn this. Like, this is my life. Like, Damn. you know? And yeah, it, it was like three or four days later. He called me over. He's like, you're ready. It's your time. You know? You asked for it. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. They strapped me up and they said, you know, this dude right here, he's playing basketball right now. He goes, pick one person. I don't care who it is, but it's got to be done by yard recall. It's so on. right there on the spot? They yeah. didn't even give you a day in advance, nothing? No. You're like, hey, that's it right now, yard recall. No, probably because I was young and uh, there, there's no experience. I'm not tried okay. and true yet. I'm not uh. tested. So, yeah. They said, get one person. And they said, it, it's got to be done by yard recall and stay on them till, till they shoot. That's a fucking cold intro Steve. into that game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was, yeah, he handed me a big old piece of rebar. You know? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Stay on them till they shoot, you said? So when um, an incident happens on the yard, they'll, they'll shoot a block gun like three or four times before they cock the mini-14. So when he says shoot, he's basically saying, like, let, let the block gun go yeah. off. Like, you know, we're Sorenos. We, yeah. we want to make a show. Like, we want to let it be known. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? There, there's just basically this idea that, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're soldiers, we're whatever. You don't stop until... We're the last ones. We never go down. We we mm -hmm. whatever. And That's don't the try ideology. Because it, 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 it makes it doesn't zero, make sense. It makes but zero sense. Nah, yeah. it makes zero sense. Yeah, I get it. I, I mean, I feel like I get at least the idea where it's like back in the day warfare. It's like it's yeah. the pride and the loyalty that comes with that. Yep. It's like, and this is your your name is is your action right now. So mm -hmm. what you're doing is their name and like, who you're representing. So you're representing, you know, these like top notch dudes, like these hard hard you know hard headed guys that know what's up. Yeah. We're taking those hits and look, we don't stop. Yeah, trying to prove a point or like a mission. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting from it. Yeah, and and and, and it's not an isolated incident either, right? Every there's a lot of homies that I'm sure that had the same mentality that you do oh, that yeah. are willing to not stop. They don't want to stop. Why? Because they want to say, if, let's say Brian went up there with somebody else, 
the other dude may be like, fuck it. I want my name to be mentioned a step above his because mm-hmm. I went the extra mile. And there's dudes that are constantly trying to fight their way up that hierarchy, you know, yeah, of, yeah. of violence, of yeah. whatever, just because to be acknowledged, to get the name out there, to myriad of reasons. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's almost like a, a part of your resume, like you're putting, there you you're go. putting it on there. That's you know? and that's 100%. Get, yeah. That's it. Spot on. It's yeah. adding to your resume. When you get somewhere, here you go. My name. They call, whatever. And now Brian's good. He's done X, Y, and Z, you know? Yeah. So how so after that that time like after that exact experience there wasn't any I mean obviously there was an additional acceptance like you know good shit or you know you did it yeah was there anything else like was there a, that came with that um you know so you know he we ultimately went on the basketball court you know and and we we jumped on him and we did what we did and you go to the hole mm-hmm. so the holes are like another form of right. graduation you know the mm-hmm. hole. Prison within it, it, prison. Yeah, huh? prison within a prison. This is where, you know, um, the important people are at, you know, and it's great for the resume, mm-hmm. you know, and this is where you learn. A lot of education goes on back there, like books and, and, and you know, learning like the, the intricate parts of like the lifestyle and, and, and the game and all that. So it's it's definitely a learning environment. So I went back there and, um, you know, this is, you know, you line up and you do your workouts and you wake up early and you roll your mattress, and, and, you know, real like military, like, and, and, I, and, I, and I loved it. And, and I loved it because this is the way I viewed myself at the time, like a soldier in the army. So that, yeah, that was my first trip. That was, that was my first go around right there. Now, I don't know if, if I'm asking this question, taking it back. How did you get lonely as a nickname? Well, it was actually given to me like for my homegirls because I was always going to juvenile hall. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was always going to juvenile hall, and they, they they would always write me like, and we used to listen to oldies a lot and Lonely Boy and all Lonely that. Boy. It used okay. to be Lonely Boy, but when I went to prison, I dropped the boy because I'm a man, man. Uh-huh. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? No boy no more. Yeah, right? so they call me Lonely Boy because I was always in juvenile hall, and uh, you know, I guess I, I always, I'm always present, but I'm off to the side, like you know, that's just. You do you. Yeah, yeah. Did that reputation kind of, did any reputation change like a nickname or building you a nickname while you were incarcerated? No. And, and you know the, the crazy part? When I was a tagger, my tag name was Bliss. And somebody pointed out to me one time, look at the like the difference. Contrast. Yeah, yeah. the contrast. Like Bliss is like just a pure joy and a happiness. Mm-hmm. Whereas Lonely is like just a, it's a sad like, you know. And and it's it's pretty accurate, you know. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when I, when I evolved into this this Lonely character that I developed, yeah, that that's. I wasn't a happy person yeah. at all. So you, you had that that experience, and I appreciate you sharing that because I feel like that's one of the first times that we've had someone on here that really explained, you know, that experience of what they had to take part of in order to, you know, make them make themselves make their name and accept that life. Ideally, yeah. What happened after that? Like, what was like? How consistent did that become, or did it even get any like worse? If you could talk about that. Well, I mean, I, shortly, I, real quick, I think. Brian's getting at the shoe term, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, something that happened in, in between that time was I was working in the kitchen and um, a riot had taken place on the yard. Oh, shit. With the Southerners and the African Americans on the yard. And I'm down, I, I work in the kitchen, so I, I go to work in the morning um, about five o'clock. I was a, an assistant cook, so mm. I was going early. So they were doing a program where, um, you know, the Southerners, the Mexicans go to work one day. Um, with uh, like the northerners and then the black population would go with the white inmates the next day and they doors would open so they looked up at my bed card one morning and it's they seen okay it's a white dude oh, and they popped snap. me out okay. on 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 the black population day and 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 you got the suit right here and everything yeah, yeah and, and, and the homies had already I'm young so like I'm kind of naive they go look there's a potential that this is gonna happen right. so they they had me I was strapped up ready and the door opened me and my silly jumped up fuck here it is here like it is. you know he goes I'm gonna go out with you I can't I said I can't fool like you know you you couldn't have gotten off like right there as soon as they so opened it, just to do. get away well, just yeah <laughs> I had the strap in my pocket so I was gonna go around the corner and the first person I saw I was gonna just you start know? chewing yeah. on him immediately. So I go around the corner. Little did I know, they they saw my door open. So they were already waiting in the cup for me. Uh, three dudes and they hopped on me and, and they they were all strapped. I got stabbed twenty seven times. Jesus when they, they, Christ! Yeah, they tore me up. Times. Yeah, they tore me up. I, I got the scars still like on my body today. 
And it and it was with a with a with a real fierro like like. Lucky for me, it was um they were ice picks. I mean, that sounds worse. Though, no, huh? yeah, you know, those. I mean, you know, they have the bone crushers that will. Right. One yeah. shot. That's pretty much I'm it. Not a, yeah, I'm not on reentry podcast. It's right. Like, yeah. yeah. Bone crushers, like, but they were um they were ice picks. There were three of them. And they they hurt like they're they're not you know. Fuck. Yeah, I, I, I keep getting this idea like fucking a hole that small, internal bleeding, and yeah, yeah. all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, there was a lot of bleeding. I went into the, uh, you know, they put me in the ambulance. I went over there, but uh, luckily no vital organs got hit. Uh, it hurt, and you know, I uh, I bled like it soaked my sheets for about a week after that. Mm. I wake up in the morning, and my sheets would be soaked in blood. But that was a, that was a huge moment right there too, because again. I'm putting on this whole facade of I took right. one for the team, but inside, I was traumatized. Mm -hmm. Like that put the that put a fear in me right there that lasted for the for the duration of my time in prison. There, I, I even up until the day that I paroled, like entirely connected, like mm. on a positive path. Like when the tension of something on the yard is gonna happen, it, it would trigger like like an anxiety mm -hmm. and a fear in me. But for years, I always had the thought like, am I gonna get stabbed again? So like that really impacted me, and that's when my heroin use really became heavy. In order like to cope with all this stuff that was going on inside of me, behind that. How we, often were you doing that? That whole the heroin? heroin stuff, yeah. I mean, it started um, like a couple times a week, and ultimately evolved to every day to completely strung out. And here's the thing: like when I got stabbed, I was 18 years old. These are forty year old men like booking me, right. like on top of me. Like, so you that's it was fucking crazy. crazy. You're year fresh that, in. Yeah. Bro, like, this is all my first year that we're talking Ooh, about right whoa, here. Oh, yeah. what a fucking entrance, honestly. Right. Right. The dude wasn't lying. Like he was not yeah, lying, bro. You <laughs> got a first hand fucking experience of that. And I huh? remember like I, I had a homeboy in the yard and like, you know, he would call the streets and word would get around and like my grandparents, my mom would come like, Oh God, man. Like, what? You've been in prison like seven months. Like what, what's happening? Dead what's ass. going on? Like they were scared to death. And again, like so selfish it was me 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 not taking into any kind of consideration like what i'm dragging my family through you know did, did they get a call for that do you normally get a call when no. you go to the infirmary like that no no, no. that's no. not like a fat you know how you hear yeah, stories where they if you die i guess like, jesus okay yeah. that's what i was getting at yeah. but i'm like that's damn near close you would yeah, think yeah. call my people and let them know god damn and know? here's the thing like that's not a big deal getting stabbed in prison that's yeah. there's right no, fortunately uh, dying is not a big deal you know it's the life, life really doesn't have any meaning in there whatsoever. The seals don't care. Somebody could get killed in the yard. They scoop them up, take them away, and resume yard. Everybody starts playing handball again, you know, and basketball. It's sad. It's sad, you know. That's yeah, I think it's day. it's on it's on the prison culture that we create for ourselves, and also for the COs coming from the COs. They're encouraging that culture just as well. They're and making they're it even worse. Up, yeah. Too. Oh like, man. I mean, when you're in a prison yard, it's just. The energy and the hostility, and it's all mm -hmm. there. Like, seals are impacted just as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember I had a conversation with a seal in Iron when he goes, You think when we see a stabbing on a yard, like, I'm not impacted by it? Like, you know, that guy worked in my building. Like, I knew him. Like, I saw him in visiting with his family. Mm -hmm. Like, I never really took that into consideration either. And the, the effect that the it has on the seals. The huh? suicide of seals is high, too. What? I that's didn't know that. Thing? I've never because read anything for, on that. For, for a person that like is not in that lifestyle, that's just coming there to collect a paycheck to sit on a prison yard, like you're taking in like no. a lot of like really ugly energy, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, really ugly energy. So anybody in there, whether it be a free staff or a CO, like a, a prison environment is really taxing, like like on the spirit. Yeah. You know? So that's all your whole first year. Let's talk about the 28 remaining years that you got, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, like, Luckily, they started to slow down like so Fucking you know? first year, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. You know what? That's like me. When I first went up there, you would hear those horror stories. That is a perfect story that I would hear. Yeah. Like, bro, don't get caught up. Don't be the one. These are those stories that they bounce around. Yeah. That you, well, at least me, I prayed, crossed my fingers. Like, please don't let me get into these situations, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, having to go to a yard where I'm not supposed to to take off and just let me go where I need to go, yeah. right? You know, yeah. that that's a fucking crazy intro right there. Yeah. So things slow down a after all of that. It's like, it just kind of like became... Well, I mean, it was still going on. It just wasn't like back to back. Like yeah. that was probably like the busiest year. But, you know, um, I, I stayed in Salinas Valley for about six years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were riots and um, I went to the whole, you know, again for 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 a couple different things 
moved on to uh, where did I go from there to Tehachapi. I ended up going to Tehachapi Shoe. Um, then I moved from to, from Pleasant Valley. No, from I mean Salinas uh, Valley. Salinas Valley. Yeah, and know. you were healed already good and everything. You didn't have like no fucking yeah, residual. Yeah, I was effects. young, so it, like okay, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I didn't have to walk with a limp. It, it just the pain. It, it was all psychological damage really, okay. at that point. You know what it had done to me. But um, yeah, I ended up going to Tehachapi. Um, I caught another stabbing, and they sent me to Tehachapi Shoe for two years. Um, and I went to Sadef after that. Okay, and, Corcoran. Yeah, to Corcoran, and Corcoran is just a madhouse. By that time in Corcoran, my my heroin use was bad. I was mm-hmm. shooting up daily, every day, mm-hmm. every day. And, and Corcoran, I think, is one of those spots where it's yeah, it's it's it's, they, it's there all day. It's crooked at its core. Man. Like they're, they're everything Corcoran is just it's so. So crooked. if you have one of those habits, you can imagine how it's probably not going to be fucking very helpful to you. Being yeah. in an environment where it's very readily accessible yeah. and you're fucking sitting there going through some shit where you need to get high every day. Yeah. 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 So uh, at that point, you know, it was just, uh, you know, I was involving myself in like in the politics of the yard. Um, I had I had put in like a lot of like work, I guess, at that point. So um, I had kind of maybe evolved more into like a uh, like a decision making stage, um, you know, like a planning mm-hmm. Um, and just my, my, my whole world has shrunk to, to, to my next fix. Like I, I was shooting heroin every day. I was strung out to where if I didn't have it, I'll, I'll be sick as a dog going through like severe withdrawals. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything was about that. And I stayed in that circle. I stayed in that. I, from, from, from sad if I went to, to Kern Valley, which was new Delano. Okay. They called it the super 180 cause it was four 180 yards. Uh, same how, thing. How, how many years did you have in at this point? This is how many years in? Um, like probably like thirteen, maybe. At that Fuck, yeah. that's insane, still, bro. That's dude's like, his whole terms, yeah. and all, that's just a little, yeah. you know, a little intro for you. Yeah. Uh, so at that point, I was almost at like the halfway point. Of okay. Sentence, yep. You know, and it, I can't say like it, it was just the, like the same thing. You know, getting high, yard politics. Um, when you would hit the hole, you didn't have to. Um, I'm assuming they didn't have it back there, or at least not as 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 everywhere like it was on the main line, right? What's that? Uh, bl- a heroin. Um, like yeah, you couldn't just fucking. Yeah, they had exactly. it back there like that too. Yeah, yeah. So like, if if you know, anytime I know that I that I'm gonna like. Okay. I'm gonna do something, you know. I, I'm, I'm gonna shove a bunch of it up my, my gangster my, pocket. Yeah, my gangster <laughs> pocket. You know? Hello. She know about that, B, huh? She know about oh, that. Look, yeah. Straight out of the camera, my boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you know, when you're in your addiction, there's nothing you won't do to, to, right. to maintain I, I, that. Right. Yeah. You know? I, I can see that. <laughs> Why are you smirking, my boy? I don't know. <laughs> Dave is smirking. Yeah. No, what do you mean? You ain't never had an iPhone? Whole, uh, uh, just, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it tri- that culture is trippy too, bro. Like the what you guys call it, the pocket keister bunny. Keister. Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the fucking gangster the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> There's all kind of yeah. right. That's something else, man. Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. culture for sure, and it's violating. So don't fucking go to jail. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And th- like think of like <laughs> th- that's so, like that's bad right there. Like you're you're stretching yourself just to yeah. like, maintain a habit. Like there's there's nothing attractive about that. Right. Nothing attractive about that. When, uh, because you didn't mention earlier, there was like the that suicidal point that you got to. Yeah. When was that? Around what time? So, um, when I was in Kern Valley, um, is when I like I was by that point I was really really heavy in 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 the, in the prison politics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the selling of drugs and and um, just a lot of anything going on in the yard. And I was picked up by the by the IGI, which are the gang investigators, and they. They validate me as, as an associate of a prison gang, and they you get put in the shoe permanently. So, Indeterminates at that time? Yeah, permanently. Yeah. The shoe. So you're going to go to the hole, to the shoe, and like that's it. You're doing life in the shoe now. They At that time, the phrase was snitch, parole, or die. That's the only way you're getting out. And for me, the only option was death at that point. You know, I'm not, you know, the other two, um, I'm not going to snitch. I'm definitely not going to parole, you know. None of that. So mm. um, I went there. I, I sat in Corcoran for for nine years in, in single cell, in the same cell. 
but it was during that time in 2011 is when my grandmother died. My grandmother it was the love of my life. She used to visit me every other weekend. We'd write nonstop. She's my best friend, you know. I have her name right here. Her name is Sheila. Actually, the 23rd is the anniversary of, of her death is coming up. Man, rest in so, peace to grandma, man, yeah, for real. For sure. So, yeah. you know, I, I got the visit, and I found out that, that she had passed away, and it was unexpected. She had a brain aneurysm. She was supposed to be there and visiting, and my mom shared with me that news. And there's not – devastation doesn't even begin to describe, like, like what I felt in that moment. Um, it, I, I found it was on New Year's Eve, you know, and I've shared this story before. I'll, I'll never forget it was, um, it was 1136 because I remember Ryan Seacrest and Nicki Minaj were on TV, you know, mm -hmm. the ball drops. Mm -hmm. When I said, I'm going to fucking kill myself right now. Oh, like, man. this is the moment. Like, my life, I'm strung out on dope. I'm in a prison inside of a prison. Like, I'm, I'm sitting in my cell. I'm, this is my tomb. Like, I'm not going anywhere anymore. And the love of my life, like, they're going to put her in the ground in a couple days, and I can't even say goodbye to her. Fuck this, I'm gone. Now, my decision now is being able to do it. So I, I told myself I need to get these sheets, I need to braid them, and I need to get them onto that vent fast and around my throat, and I need to jump quick. Like, uh, and, and a lot of people kill themselves back there, so I know how to do it. I know how it works. You know, my grandma raised me in a, I, I went to church. I was raised as a Christian. So I also knew that suicide meant I was going to go to hell. Right. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to catch up to grandma. That's who I wanted to be with. So I, I closed my eyes and I said a prayer. And, you know, in the typical gang member, narcissist, addict, trying to bargain with everything, mm -hmm. I'm, hey, God, I'm about to do this one last thing, but it's for a good reason. Like, you know, right. I'm asking for forgiveness. You know, I, I just, I, I want to be with my grandma. Like, there's, a, I'm unredeemable down here. Like, my life is worth nothing. At the end of that prayer, like, during that prayer, like, there, there were no, like, lights. I didn't have any of the major epiphanies. But I came to the decision when I said amen that I'm going to hold off for, like, a day or two. I'll, I'll, I'm going to kill myself maybe in a couple of days. But I'm, I'm going to just hold off for a day or two. And in that day or two, like, I was just going through so many emotions. Like, I sobbed for, like, 30 days straight. Mm -hmm. I'm talking these massive, just huge tears, like on the floor, completely mm -hmm. just devastated in silence too, because I can't let anybody that's know what, what I'm going through. That's literally what I'm thinking too right now. Like you doing it in front of like the others, no, but obviously you yeah. still have to keep that. When the shoe, luckily you're, you're so secluded. I'm in a yeah. cell by myself. So I like, you know, I'd be just totally destroyed that somebody lonely on the tier. Just, yeah. You know, how you doing? I'm doing good, homie. You know, everything's good. And like this and that. Yeah. It's all good. That's life. You know, you lose people, people die. Like, you pull back to just you had to go back to the to the to that lonely. Facade, you had yeah, to go back yeah. to and when in the reality of it was I, I was like broken spiritually, Man. mentally, physically on all levels. And in those 30 days, I came to the decision that I have to honor my grandma. I have to live, I ha something has to change. Like it wasn't even about like this life is not working for me. Um, it was just about her at that point. You know, um, but I didn't know how. I remember one thing she always says was, uh, she always wanted me to get my GED. So the first thing I did, I wrote a request for an interview and I asked to get my GED. They sent me like five books and I studied them and I, I by myself and I, I took my pretest and I passed it. Nice. And then I got my GED like about three months after her death. And I hung it up on the wall right above yeah. her picture. And something like a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. for the first time in my life, like, and we talked about, like, you know, in, in the culture of gangs where your demonstration only lasts for, like, a day or right. two. Like, this lasted for, like, a month. Like, and it wasn't going away. Like, no. I was proud. And when I would tell people, I would get, like, a different kind of feedback. And it just Like, what, what do you better. mean? Negative feedback? No, like, we're proud of you. Like, Good. You did okay. That. Like, okay. You know, like, my mom and, and, and my sister and just, like, positive feedback. It, 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 it hit me different. Mm -hmm. Like, it felt good. And, you know, my grandma would, every single letter she would write me, there'd be a Bible verse at the bottom. So I made, I made it a habit of every day. In the morning, I would open up one of her letters. I kept them all. I'd get down at the end of my bunk on my knees, open the Bible, and I'd pray and I'd read the verse. Put that letter away in the next day. So I would do that every day. And these, you know, the scriptures started 
there were new reglas. There were new new ways of going about things and and, and looking at life. So it was a very slow process. Mm -hmm. It was very slow. And but I was still like, it goes to show when you have a desire to change, you're, it, when you're so twisted up, that mm -hmm. desire doesn't untangle the web. No. Because during this time, I got caught with a weapon. And I remember telling myself, like, I'm, I'm gonna make a deal. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna use a weapon. I'm never gonna use violence again, but I'll hold it for him. That, that's cool. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the middle ground right there. Yeah. Like, hold, that, I ain't that's gonna me, do it, yeah. but I'll hold it for him. I'll hold it for him, you know? Um, I'm not gonna engage in conversations that are gonna lead to someone getting assaulted, but if they want me to pass a kite, I got them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, what are they? They're called, uh, uh, my resentments. I, I, I can't think of the word right. Oh, reservations. So I got okay. reservations. Like, I, I'll do this, but I won't do that. I'll right, do this. Right. But I, I'm working towards a better, but I, when I got that last write up for the weapon, like, I just was like, damn. Like, but but that was trying to what save face with the dudes that were in there still exactly okay exactly mm. because I can't walk up to them and say hey man like I'm trying to change my life and do something better <laughs> it's gonna be frowned upon they're gonna exactly. be like it's like well, this fucking weirdo like he's about to go out ass backwards right, right now like right. you know what I mean like that's a that's I'm crazy. sorry for laughing but it's no. like it sounds like the way when you put it like that in that perspective yeah. it's just like. That's exactly it how it goes down. Dumb. That's why like, when you Jared right even now? brought up the Christian part, the same thing, bro. Yeah. I was like, no. I tip my hat and to you, And I remember, man. like, yeah. when, when he did that, like, certain people, like, would look down on him. Mm -hmm. But these are miserable people with no foundation of their own. So Thank for you. me, imagine me walking up and saying, bro, I, I, I want to be a better person and change my life. <laughs> they're What's like, with what? You? Like, are you a weirdo <laughs> or something? Like, that, they look at you like, like there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Not so much the case anymore. But, yeah, so... I'm growing in silence. Like I'm, I'm changing the books I'm reading. Like I'm trying to listen to different music. I'm trying to like watch different TV shows just slowly. Yeah. Trying to become a better person, and it took so long to untangle myself mm -hmm. from like all this stuff because fuck, I was I was twisted, man. And, and it sounds like you were knee deep, so it was a little harder for you to pull back to, at to that point, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the um, the opportunity for me to get out of the shoe came with the hunger strikes. Well, so now we're in what, 2014, 15? Yeah, 16? this is 14. Okay. We had the, that mass hunger strike. 30,000 inmates in California uh, stopped taking meals. You know, it was covered by the, all the news outlets. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of um, people in the entertainment industries were highlighting it, saying, like, you're torturing these people. You know, you're, you're leaving them in solitary confinement um, just because of what you think they're going to do or, or, or mm -hmm. what authority you think mm -hmm. they have. And everybody, the Human Rights Commission, everybody acknowledged that it was sanctioned torture. Human and rights it, violation, yeah. yeah. And I had been in there nine years by myself at that point. There were dudes like 30 years, man, 25 years, like without a write-up. Qu question, I always wondered this about dudes that did a long time back there. Do you feel, well, I remember, as I went to the hole nowhere near as long. I went for like a fucking month, mm -hmm. and I was like, thank God. I was like, I know why I don't want to be in prison, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. It always did make me feel a little better in the sense that I don't have to have a motherfucker here with me mm -hmm. asking for floor time. You know, yeah, uh, um, yeah. I get to read what I want in my own peace of mind. It's sickening, but that, that, yeah, did you, your own privacy, right? Did you ever, I know, and then some dudes yeah. that did that type of shoe time, they'll talk about it like low key, it was yeah. a little more mellow, it was a little more, it mean, was, yeah. You know? I mean, if you like. Yeah, that's the good side if, if you're looking for the good in it. Like, okay, there, there's okay. zero good. Because, like, I remember my cell, I spent nine years in the same cell by myself. Like, I knew where every crack was. Like, I knew, oh, I, like, I knew every single spot in that cell. Like, it was the perforated doors. Like, I knew, okay. yeah, there were 963 holes in my door. What? So, you counted 963 I counted, holes? Uh, hundreds of times. Jesus. No <laughs> I wrote a way. poem called 963 holes. Oh, we got to hear that. Yeah, get ready for it. Yeah, get ready. No, I did. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, man. Yeah. That's, uh, you hear stories about that, but I've never heard anyone really put it in a play, like the whatever, you know, but that, that's insane. You, you, you're How a testimony many cracks of were there? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember saying, I guarantee you, you might, Brian might have an answer, right? Yeah, I used to laugh because, like, in, in front of the toilet, there, there was like a stain in the wall that used to look like the Virgin Mary, too. Like, it was great. Oh, you start seeing shit. That's, I feel like, oh, yeah, when, as you yeah, start staring yeah. at something for so mm -hmm. long, even if you're looking at all those holes or whatever, you start seeing shit. It's just whatever you're thinking, you start seeing it. And there I mean, would be moments, too, like, like you would feel your sanity like oh man getting, slipping like, yeah slipping because I, I remember there would be days where you're just trying to pass time like i would make a picture frame and 
I refold all my clothes and straighten my books. I make a book cover and then I'll look up and like 12 hours had gone by. And I was like, damn, like I was so like deep inside my head, like somewhere else. Because every day is the same. You wake up, they give you your tray through the tray slot. They come back a half hour for mm. tray pickup. They do the showers. You go to yard every single day. Is is no different than the next one, so you lose complete track of time, and you don't have any um, human contact. Nothing whatsoever, especially if, without if, being if, a celly, huh? If, if, have... Yeah, if an officer brushes your hand while he's putting on um, handcuffs, that's the only human contact. I shared a story once. My first human contact when was in 2014. Scott Budnick had come to Corcoran Shoe. Okay, I, I tell these guys that, that that name rings bells, man. Scott Budnick is one solid dude, bro. Like, He's amazing. I mean, Danny, Danny Trio calls him Scott the Budnick. patron saint of dudes who are busted. <laughs> like, does he? Does he really? Everybody okay. has a Scott yep. Budnick story. Like, right. he's touched people's lives. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm home, like, as a direct result of what he's created and the work that he's done. 100%. So he comes through and he's telling us about this organization called ARC, the Anti Recidivism Coalition. And I go, what is it? And he looked at me, he goes, it's an army of motherfuckers fighting for you to get home. Hey, damn. You know? I and I was that. like, damn. And he brought Elizabeth Calvin. Like, mm. this is the Mount Rushmore of like mm -hmm. prison reform, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Elizabeth Javier Calvin is, is doing the life without parole type of uh, yeah, legislation. I mean, yeah, legislation, she's right? ha she has her hands in every, okay. like, everybody free needs to like salute mm -hmm. her for sure. So as he comes in, you know, they put us in a stand up cage. It's it's the size of a phone booth and it's just with holes, and he walks up and he's like, "What's up, bro?" And he gives me he reaches his hand through the top hole, and 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 I reach my hand and we 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 touch fingers. That's called a shoe handshake. That was the first a shoe handshake. That's a shoe okay. handshake. That was the first human contact that I had in five years at that point. You know, and he came and told me there's a law that just passed called SB two sixty. Yep, and it, it says basically that. If you are arrested before the age of 18, you're going to go home someday. I, I couldn't even register at that point. Did that, did that didn't seem real, right? It was like, uh, okay. That. I mean, these people seemed legit and like this. They dude, did, right? Yeah. But what about the, how many laws have you heard prior to that? Where yeah. you're like, that doesn't apply to violent offenders. It's not going to apply to me. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But like, I, but I got a murder and like, I, I, I've been in trouble mm -hmm. all these years. And he goes, I, I promise you, he, he opened up a laptop. First laptop I ever seen spun it around and oh, he goes man. he showed me a picture of like 20 guys standing in front of the um the Supreme Court the steps of the Supreme Court he goes these were all ex-lifers right here all of these guys and one of the dudes in the cage goes fuck that was my celly uh, so it kind of like oh shit like it was legit and mm -hmm. then he showed us a picture he was like standing next to Obama so I was like okay this guy's official this is a real deal yeah. yeah he had done the hangover like I was mm -hmm. like okay and and it, it, you could just tell he's genuine like his smile matches his handshake like yep. He, he's the real deal. So f there's a glimmer of hope. So now, like, and it worked perfect because I'm already, at, like, on a, like, a, mm -hmm. like a low-key transition in my life. So that was like, okay. Then the hunger strike came. Involved myself in the hunger strike. And now I'm getting kicked out of the shoe. They're letting everybody out. So now I'm riding this wave. And now with, with SB 260 and the hunger strike came self-help programming. So now I get to involve myself and find out, like, why have I been doing the shit that I've been doing my whole life? Like, I, I get to answer these questions. Like, why, right. why, why did I do that? Why did I think this way? Like, I'm, I, I get to get in groups and, and, and get the answers to these mm -hmm. things, finally. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 was, I, went, I went head first into the self-help programming. While you were in the shoe? No, did they didn't have anything there. I was doing stuff through the mail, and I was reading, like, the big blue book of Narcotics Anonymous, okay. which is, like, my biography. Um, so, I, yeah, I was just... Things on my own, okay. you know, journaling and, and stuff like that. W w which I think w it speaks more volumes to do it by yourself because a lot of people don't understand it. It has to start with you. So if those wheels started moving already, yeah. that was a good fucking sign, you know, yeah. that you were headed towards a, a righteous path, you know? Yeah, the, and definitely the, for me, writing has always been like the, my best way of like teaching myself. Oh, nice. You know, getting my stuff out, journaling in these okay. composition books, which I kept for years and like watched my thoughts evolve, you know? And in the process of doing these self, I'm in NA, I'm in Criminal Gang Members Anonymous, I'm, I'm doing emotional intelligence, and I, I'm learning new words, empathy. And one thing I do want to point out, when my grandmother died, I had a moment, too, during those 30 days when I was, like, just in straight despair. I remember thinking to myself, 
everything I'm feeling right now in this moment, I intentionally inflicted on a family. Mm. Like, I, I made that connection with, 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 with the life that I took. Right. And once you make that connection and you feel that, like, there's no coming back from right. that, you know? And I always had that foundation of, like, a good person, you know? It, it got lost along the way, but I, I tapped back into that, and it rocked me to my core. Like, it, it, it really rocked me to my core, coming to terms with what I had done. So I did some victim awareness, and, and I'm learning words like empathy and, and like it 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 was it was it was life changing, and in the process, um, I was coming in from the yard one day, and I'm open to hope and redemption and all kind of things now. So I see a sign on the wall that says "Positive Change Dog Program." <laughs> like they're not gonna be no this is a level four. Like this is an <laughs> active ass level four. I I never knew. I have heard of that program. I had heard guys talk about it. I never knew it was on on a on a level four. Right now, as you're telling me, I'm like, holy shit, they really allowed that on a, on a four? Yeah. And we were like the pilot program. They said if we can have oh, the program on this man. yard, then it can basically function yeah. anywhere. On all yep. yards. Because th th this is a war zone, that, mm -hmm. that yard right there was no joke. So I signed my name, you know, and I'll be damned if like a month later, I didn't get called for an interview. And I walked in with, uh, with two ladies, Leah Marquez and Lisa Porter and, and Zach Scow all my mentors today, sitting there with two dogs, and they interviewed me for the program. And uh, ultimately, I got in. And a month later, they're walking in with, like, dogs. And, and on Wednesday, they would come. They would tell us, these are your goals for your dog. This is what you're going to do. They would give us training techniques. And you'd work with the dog that week. And they'd come back the next Wednesday and check the progress. That's so What, what was your cool. first interaction with a dog, did he run up to you? Did you? Well, Zach came. Those Zach fucking dogs, walked man. in with, a, with a pit bull, and he had a huge gash on his oh, head. Oh man! And I says, "Man, what happened to that dog?" He goes, "Man, his his former owner hit him over the head with a hammer." Oh, that's funny. And I up, told him, Fuck, "Man, I've been hitting the head with a hammer." <laughs> you know what I mean? Damn. Like, like I made a connection with this dog. That's like, the dog for me. Yeah. Shit, yeah. So I can I pet him? He goes, "Yeah." And, and I, I, I squatted down to pet the dog. And I can only describe it as like a spiritual experience. Like mm -hmm. it, it was crazy. Like you hear the panting of the dog, and like it changed me forever. Like to to this, dogs are my life today. Like right. I couldn't imagine a world without them. You know, mm -hmm. this, I work with dogs. Like my life is dogs. So I ultimately end up getting my own dog. I did the program twice, so I got two dogs. I trained them, and you learn training techniques and a, a lot of stuff. But it's like the I made a connection at one point. You know, we talked about why I joined the gang. I wanted love. I wanted acceptance. Mm -hmm. Like, the dog gave me all that. Like, when I Whoa. become part of their pack, wow. you know, I get acceptance every day. Like, this dog loves me unconditionally. Like, it fulfills all my needs that I wanted. And, and it, that's, that's what I call a spiritual awakening, you know. And the program is designed so, so well that and, and this is on a level four. Like they'll pair a southerner up with with a, with a blood. Uh, they'll a southerner up with a crip. Like what was that like a uh, frowned upon at the time or no? Other than than program reasons or to make it happen. Well, otherwise uh, the way that yard was at the time, like there was a level of respect, but you wouldn't um like it just hang out with somebody else. You stick really just tight to, to your not own. avoid any drama. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. stick to your own. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so you finally you guys are making breakthroughs. You're kicking it with other. Yeah, cars. And so everything. they paired me up with the with the with the blood out of out of, out of Compton, and we used to see each other like on the chair all the time, right. and it was just the, the universal head nod, like what's Sadly up, done. you know yeah. what I mean? It would just be one of those. He was cool and all that. We just, you know, he was a soldier for his, I was a soldier for yep. mine, and and our paths, fortunately, never crossed. But me and this dude connected over this dog, like, and he became like my best friend. To this day, nice, this dude is man. like, this is my brother. Like, I work with him today. Nice. Oh, okay. Wow. I, and I think I heard you mention it on, uh, I think it was part two of, of yeah. the uh, Hoodstocks yeah. podcast, man. Dudante Farmer. This dude is my brother, man. Like, yeah. we, we, we share holidays together. I was with him today. Like, we, nice. he got me my job. He got yeah, out a year before Dante, me. And, yeah, yeah. He, he reached out. He was in contact with me. Like, so, so you guys didn't get into it to keep the dog? Who? What happened? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like, we trained together and, like, you know, uh, he, he he's just he's got a natural ability with nice. dogs. Like this this dude, he's he's no joke. He's 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 really good at his craft. 
So during the process, my mom put in to adopt my dog when the program was over because mm -hmm. ultimately our goal was to get these dogs adopted. Okay. Okay. Trained, adopted, and they're ready to go. They're more marketable yeah. after that. Yeah, exactly. Here you go. They yeah. would film us and, and they would put it out on the internet and people would put okay. in applications. So my mom got my dog, a German Shepherd named Flynn. Oh mm. my God, yeah, a German yeah. Shepherd. So the next round, um, I had another one, a terrier named Sheldon. My mom says, man, I'm not going to be adopting every damn dog. That, you know? <laughs> oh, I said, mom, Sheldon is my soulmate. Like, right. you got to adopt Sheldon. She adopted Sheldon, you know? And ultimately, I went home to these dogs. Like, oh, four awesome, years later, man. like, they freaking flipped out when they saw me. They went nuts. And uh, there's no way you can take a dog, so you really didn't see them for all those years, huh? No. Like, the program is 14 weeks, and, like, the level of, like, just... <laughs> we do the graduation, and I'm talking, like, level four, like, like grown, like, hardened criminals right, right. sobbing, like, when those dogs, like, graduated and oh, walked off. Man. But the following day, when the dogs weren't there, like, we walked out to all the empty crates... It's like a level of like emptiness, like I can't describe. Oh. Like we just wanted the program to like come back around yeah. already, like to fill us up. You know, how long did that take? Like that whole period of where the program ended and it started again? about two months. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't too bad. Like yeah. it wasn't like that. But but I think what they're long months because the dogs are in prison too. So you guys are vibing every minute, every yeah. So you get a dog them, and you're right? up. Like your yeah. life has changed. Like and the impact that that program has on a yard. You know, we, we talked about, like, the invisible lines that separate mm -hmm. different factions of the yard. Like, dogs wipe those away. Like, if you have a dog on a leash, those lines don't exist. Like, I, I was, people, hey, come here, dog, let me, let me, and, and what? yeah, I'm walking into areas that otherwise I would have never done, and, and the, we're sharing dog stories, and they're petting my dog, and yeah, I used to have this dog, and it literally, like, That's it was a ripple, man. yeah, it was a ripple across the yard. Like, it brought peace to the yard, um, it I, I don't know why there's not a dog program in every prison and like right. I help advocate for that and positive change is it's 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 a game changer one hundred percent, you know. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine, bro, the fucking I, I had my experience when I when I first got out, I realized everybody in this house, which is my mom's house, shout out to moms. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everybody in the house changed on me. She even tried you know, they they we come out too aggressive. We come out waking up at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. We come out putting our shoes on. It was weird. I was a weird dude to them. Long story short, the only one that never switched up on me was a little fucking chihuahua named King that I love to this day. Yeah, Shit. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> never. I would look at him and I'm like, this fucking dog will take a bullet for me without thinking twice, but your own family member would have to think twice about it naturally. Yeah. And a dog, without even a, a thought in his mind, he's there for you. And all he wants in return is a good boy. Fuck, come on, man. He Shout out to dogs yeah. out there. Come on. They dedicate their entire life to you. Their entire life yeah. is 100 dedicated to me, and all they want is a good boy. That's all they ask in return. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't imagine a world without dogs. Yeah, there's there's no one, nothing, no interaction you can equate to that, and that's real spit. Yeah. Like, somebody yeah. that's selfless, you know, and it's in a little animal, a little psh, crazy. Yeah. They hold no grudges, no resentments. Mm -hmm. You know, I love it. I love that's it. That's my so, quote. Try to be the person your dog thinks you are. That's, that's how I live my life. We need that on a shirt. Yeah. Have you thought yeah. about that yet? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, that's my motto. Yeah. Um, shit, okay, so so how long did you do the... Did that last forever? I hope it stayed at least in that prison or... No, unfortunately, um, it didn't. It, But I, right now it's in uh, North Kern. It's in Wasco. Ooh, um, nice. California City. Uh, we actually just got a program, Didanto, I mentioned, to be going into some of the youth camps. So it's expanding. Um, the head of it, his name is Zach Scow, uh, one of my mentors, an amazing person. He, he, he works so hard for prison reform mm -hmm. and, and, and the welfare of animals. He pushes constantly like to get him into different Th Those are two hard lines to push, man. Yeah. Especially out here, prison reform and like uh, advocate against animal abuse and stuff like that. Those are two things that get dismissed in society, you yeah, know? It's, it's fun. Probably the most heartbreaking work right. like, fields that you can get into, but well worth it. And you know, if you have that passion and drive in you, it just it, mm -hmm. it wakes you up every morning. Yeah, no, I love it, bro. I love it definitely. I think they should put that in every fucking prison. Yeah. Like you said, you you physically sense the whole change on the yard, the prison culture on that yard change because of those dogs, right? Oh yeah, it, it, it ripples across the yard, like the whole dynamic and every every aspect of the yard is impacted by the. Seven to fourteen dogs that are there. 
which which in other in other in another world without the dogs you going to get out you going to fight you going to get off on your on whoever's there there's going to be issues but a dog just kind of makes away with that that's right. pretty fucking insane yeah i kind i guess it kind of just softens the environment yeah, a little yeah. bit you know yeah. yeah okay so so what happened with the so that's what four at four you said four years after that you get out what's the lead up to you coming home so Immediately following, now I'm in a level four at this point. You don't parole from a level four. People are going home. You, you can't point. go home from a level four? Uh, it, it, nobody's paroling from a level four. So at this point, people are going home. Okay. SB 260 is real. Like I know people that are going home. But at, I have, okay, to be a level three, you have to have, I want to say, 63 points. So, so okay, that, so that even went up. It used to be like 54, yeah, I believe, I, or yeah, something. It's like 63. Well, I had 186 points Jesus. just from digging a hole like throughout the years. So just, right, let me yeah. bury myself. Yeah. I was eligible for parole in 2012, by the way. Oh my you god! Know? And we're in um, we're in 17, 18 right oh, now. Oh, be because you got sentenced to 15 to life, right? Yeah, I had 15 to life, so I was eligible for 15 years. At 15 yeah, years ago, like, you're like 24. At this point. Oh my god! All over that the the you just so once you fuck up like that, you can't go to board. No, you can. Like, I went to board while I was in the shoe in 2015, oh, okay, and okay. they denied me seven years. Automatically, because you're, they yeah. see, they know that you're still... Yeah, I mean, you're in the shoe, validated game, mm, number, like, right. there's no chance. So, there's no way to go to level three. So, again, I'm working hard, I'm doing what I got to do, and another, um, there's a rule change that says, basically, if you're programming productively, they'll override your points and give you what's called a good behavior override to a level three. So I applied for it, and they gave it to me. And they sent me to Ironwood, which is hey. the most intense, rehabilitative yeah. atmosphere, like superstar people. Mm -hmm. Superstar. We were talking about earlier. Your yeah, brother yeah. being one of them. Like, I, yeah. Yeah, I've heard so many good things from Ironwood, man. It's fucking crazy. And the amount of dudes that I meet that, that come home from there. Yeah, specifically and, the yard I was on, which know. was Sea Yard, like, there's at least 20 guys out here that are thriving, like right. tech, um, construction. Damn, they have the whole shebang mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, yeah. Even tech? It's just the... They had... That's... Uh, sorry. The, yeah. So I, did you ever meet James Anderson and, and uh, his brother? Um, shit, they're going to see this. And I played Call of Duty. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I played Call, Call of Duty with him. Duty with him. was in the last mile. I know about him because... Uh, I, I like I know a lot of people. He, okay. he had left before I got there, but his name like people would still talk they about. Him. That dude is a man. When you said tech, yeah. they had the the coding camp there. Oh, you and when me? I mentioned that, I meant smile, yeah. you know. Oh my god, he's a, a developer at Slack. He's yeah. a shit. You know, yeah. both of them. Uh, yeah. Um, I think even James, his brother's doing that now. Well, you got Marco Conchola, Keefe Dashell. Like these are all people that were in that last mile program that are just like killing it in the tech in the industry. tech world, huh? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, Terrell Lemons. Oh my God, yeah. learning coding. Who would have known that yeah. that would have thrived so well, or people would have been able to learn that in prison and fucking make something amazing right. out of it. You and know? you know, the magic of that yard too was like it wasn't necessarily like Ironwood itself. The prison didn't really have any like standout programs. They okay, did, they did have the Last Mile. They had a Braille program, but it was the quality and the caliber of of people that were there. There were just people there that were just next level, like it, like intelligent, driven. Mm -hmm. Like the, the change was real, like the Jared. You know, right. yeah, just right, imagine exactly. like like 20 Jareds. You know what I mean? And the positive element of that yard like was far stronger than the negative. You know? Which which sounds counterintuitive for being on a prison yard. On a GP right. yard. On a that. GP yard, yeah. 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 Like the Damn. positive element, like ran the yard. Like mm -hmm. if you weren't in a group, like what's wrong with you? Like you're not in college. Were you? That was frowned upon. That that's a. Yeah. Lo I love that culture shift. That's no. the fucking shift we need to start. Even dudes in the lifestyle that like are. I mean, if if you're in a level three, you're really not like super active anyways. But like the ones that thought they were, like still like we're going to groups because, like, well, you're not in college. You're not going like. It, it's just. What are you it, doing? Yeah, like college is free. Like the groups are free. Like we're, we're learning about ourselves. And it was like the cool thing to do. That's you know? dope. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so really even dope. someone that that hasn't like isn't ready for it, 
They might be. They might discover themselves because they're kind of like, hey, they got to follow the crowd the same way we followed yeah, it for the negative. They be sitting in the groups like this, uh, like, I'm too cool. but then eventually it's like this, and then it's eventually like, well, you know, when I grew up, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. until yeah. now, okay, here goes a breakthrough, like, right. and boom, now we got him, like, let's mm-hmm. let's guide him from there, and it was beautiful, like, next step is college, bro, get in, and like, it, it was awesome, like, people are, are are graduating, getting degrees, and yeah, so I, I like. By that point, I, I was head first, and all these people embraced me immediately. Um, you know, Scott Budnick used to go there all the time yeah, too, yeah. like bring people to inspire us. And so, I, like, I was doing college, and I was doing groups and learning about myself, and like, I like becoming domesticated. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I was a clerk. Uh, um, my friend Abraham Preciado got me a job. Shout out to Abraham. That's crazy. You know Abraham. You know, oh yeah, man, that guy. He 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 was a blessing in my life. Yep. He 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 was uh, the clerk in the computer lab. Okay. Okay. And he told me, "Hey, I want you to take my spot." I was like, "I barely touched the computer for the first time in my life like a year ago. You want me to run the computer lab? Like, you know?" And he was like, "You can do it." Like literally, like forced me into the spot and like showed me the way and like I messed around and became like like a legit clerk in the computer lab. Right. Yeah, oh, it was crazy. Man. Yeah. But there were a lot of people like that. Yeah. There. You know? So uh I filed for a what's called a petition to advance. I had a seven year denial. So about the four year point, a petition to advance to have a sooner um parole hearing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Basically saying my circumstances have changed. I'm on a level three now. Well they denied me. Because that kind of sucks, path. huh? Yeah, yeah. It stung. It, it stung really bad. Because I'm saying, like, man, I'm doing everything positive. I'm doing it right. And I'm still mm-hmm. getting shot down. But no part of me was like, fuck this. Okay. You know, I'm going to revert back. Like, I'm on the, this is who I am at this point. It feels good. I'm proud of who I am. And I'm going by Brian now. Like, like my name is Brian. Like, people are calling me Brian. Like, it sounded so weird, like, to hear my name. Because when I got there, <laughs> like, what's up, man? Lonely. They're like... It might have been Abraham that goes like, if Jesus was standing right now, would you introduce yourself as lonely? I said no. Did he, goes, he really? Yeah, uh, he goes, nice. well, you know he's standing right here. Yeah, he's like, damn. I'm going to call you Brian. And give me <laughs> like, so I said, okay. So I was Brian from then on out, and it, it, it felt amazing. Like, you know, I embraced my name. So now I'm getting back to Brian, the, the, the kid with the compassion. I'm tapping into this stuff. and like, which, which is kind of funny because, like, if you were in the halls and they called you by your real name, oh, that's, like, disrespectful. Yeah. Like, you would yeah. fight someone. Like, don't call me by my oh, real like name. That? Yeah. That's, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that's a big switch up there. So imagine the change, you know? After, like, 27 years, uh, like, Brian was, right. I had him, I had him like, all who the is way that? tucked yeah. in. Yeah, I put him away a long time ago. So I, I'm just, I, I'm... I got my alcohol and drug specialist one and two. I graduated there. I got a, huge. my degree in social behavioral sciences. Um, nice. I'm learning computer skills. Uh, I'm just evolving as a human mm-hmm. being through all these groups. And I go to board. And um, I'm in board for 45 minutes. And they go, step outside. We're going to deliberate. I stepped outside, literally set my folder down. The door opened. They want you back in. That fast? The commissioner said, this is probably the easiest decision I've ever made. We're finding you suitable for parole. Uh, wow. Yeah. What was Dude, going oh. through your mind? <laughs> you know, like emotional. When he said it, like, ugh, like, a, like something came out of me. Like, a just it was, it was crazy. Like, like I don't just, even believe it. Like, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Are you serious? And he 20? said a whole bunch of stuff after. I have no idea what he said. I just try. I just like, I gotta get back and call my mom. Like, it, it was crazy. And I remember I got back, I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, and she, what's up? I said, God is good. You just heard like like a squeal, like just She mm. knew already. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And then from there it was the hundred and fifty day uh. 120 days for the board and then 30 days for the governor, which like probably those five months were longer than the whole 29 years combined. <laughs> like time just came to a crawl. But the day you were walking on eggshells, avoiding oh, everything, man. like ah, don't say hi to me, dog. I'm yeah. I, I'm, I'm free right now. Yeah. I got I got sixty days left. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I was totally checked out mentally. I had I had begun scrubbing prison off me like years prior, yeah. but at that point I was like, like I don't belong here. Like they they said I'm I'm suitable for parole. Like no window covers. Like I'm sitting up straight. I'm tucking everything in. Like you know, because a petty write up. 
anything. Yes. Damn. And they're taking it your date. Up the whole thing. That's yeah. what happened with Jared. Jared had a little a little incident that That's wasn't even his sad, fault. That's I know, right? <laughs> a seizure. <laughs> he had a seizure. <laughs> he had a, he Were had you a, there for that? It, he was in the hole. It, it happened like a week before I had there. He had a seizure, and they thought he was having a drug overdose. He doesn't Holy use drugs. He had fuck, a seizure. Yeah. It, was, it was heat. And they hit him with the Narcan. The right. narc, and he just jumped up and like just like clawing and I guess like he connected with an officer and they said he assaulted an officer and like yeah it was so crazy. so it could have gotten ugly fast right. even though you're on the tail end of it yeah still there was still a chance to something to fuck crazy happen that happened right I mean you could have gone to chow and forgot your ID and oh, like, oh, no, right up and you don't go home forgetting your ID like I mean there's there's officers that are really petty that yeah. they they don't like the fact that we're going home and we get free college and you know that we're happy with a life sentence and oh, they're duh. miserable free, you know? Yeah. So ain't, th ain't that a bitch. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they want us locked down and fighting and, and they see us graduating college and, you know, color lines and that yeah. don't matter to us. Like we're all friends and, and, and we're healthy and happy and mm -hmm. right. they're sitting there miserable spitting sunflower seeds out. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They, they, yeah, they hate it. So yeah. And then the day came six o'clock, James, Sell one eleven, go to R and R. My bags what? were packed. Yeah, my bags were packed. Just lifted it. I had said bye to everybody, but I remember making that that last look back, and like it was hard. Like I, I I felt survivor's guilt. Like there were dudes in there that are just as deserving as me to go home, mm -hmm. but they it just their time hadn't come yet, and it, it was hard. It was hard. Like making that last eye contact. You know, they're flashing their light, and you know. Right. Everyone, everyone's happy for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Across yeah. anyone, doesn't matter, black, white, Mexican. Yeah, that's a great thing in Ironwood. Like, we, we had been evolved out of that, like, minimal mm -hmm. thinking right there. Like, you know, we're friends and change and brothers, and, like, that's all that mattered, yeah. you know? Um, but, yeah, and, then, you know, I went through the R&R, &R, luckily, and went fast, and they drove me out to the van. <sighs> Crazy. Was it real yet? Right. No, no. Uh, it, the first two weeks, I would say, were just pure, like, just shock. Like I can't really fucking. You're waking up still thinking you're gonna get a hear a door crack or something. Yeah, and then I paroled on a Friday, so I got the weekend. Like Friday, I pulled Friday. Friday night, I was on Grunion Beach at two in the morning, like watching the little little crabs that come up in the water. You didn't have to immediately go to one of the houses. No, I, I had to check in Monday. So they gave you two days to yeah. be with your people, huh? Yeah. Oh man. Who, who, who was it? Who's the first person you you? Oh, my mom. Oh, my nephew, man. my sister, and my dog. One of my dogs was in the back seat. Oh, your dogs, man. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. And my nephew, his name's Adrian, and he's, he's eight years old. Like, he's my best friend. Like, he's my ace deuce. We go everywhere yes. together. Like, he was so happy. The first two days, he just kept saying, I'm so glad you're home, Uncle Brian. Oh, yeah, man, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, uh, the first two weeks were, it was, it was a shock. But, like, it wore off. Like pretty quick, and I, and I've adapted like uh, like relatively good. Like I I'm, I'm not like I'm into a Dodger game and like I, right. I I really don't feel like I have any hangups. Like even even a Dodgers game didn't get you. Huh? I hate going to Dodgers game. There's so much fucking yeah. people bumping into you and potential yeah, yeah. for yeah. It doesn't bother. Like but, I heard uh, people say like they have you know struggles in the mall and all that. Like nah, I just I, I'm really not. You, you know you, you know your lane, and you don't care about anything else because you are blessed. So, yeah. right? I'm yeah. sure you carry yourself. You have to, like, it's none of that matters. You're yeah. 29 years, you know? Yeah. Like, you can bump into me all you want. Right. Like, it feels good, you know? Yeah. Well, like, today. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, my bad. I, like, today, this is my daily routine. I, I wake up at 4.30. By 5, I'm out the door. I walk two miles past Crypto Arena. I get at the Pico Station train. I ride it all the way to Culver City. I get off. I go to work at Ooh. LA Canines. I get off, train back, back to the house. You know, I'll, I'll spend time with family, my girlfriend. I'll go to, you know, NA meeting or something like that. But, and then on the weekend, I write passes where, where I spend my time. And, nice. and in 30 days, uh, I'm out of the house. I had to do six months right there. So, Okay, okay. Yeah, that last... Uh, that last little hole they have on me is going to get released in about 30 days. And I'll be nice. on parole in a year. Oh, man. Even as a lifer, huh? They yeah. don't have, like, that crazy parole no more? No. Five years or no. ten years or no. something? I, I, I've seen my parole officer twice for, like, a minute. Of course. Yeah. 
Yeah. Worse. They don't. They don't want to. They don't want to see you. They don't. They got a lot going on. They're just hey, you there? Cool. Yeah. Gone. And they know like the lifers, the long term offenders. Right. Like we're not playing with it. Like we're not. Like we're walking. A, we're walking a thin line. Like we're done with that. Right mm-hmm. there. You know. Yep. Yep. Man, how how um, do you see anyone in there? Like especially lifers that may not have come home to the same like being embraced like you were. Yeah, definitely. How's there? How, what do you think about that? I mean, there's one guy that there. He did 47 years. Damn. Yeah, he did 47 years. I'm in the room with him. He, his, his, the transition is like it, it's a little more difficult, you know, and like as I can imagine. But it's beautiful to watch him like evolve. Um, my, the whole the house I'm in is all lifers. Everybody's like so okay, on good, the same page. Good, so same page. There's a level of like, hey, I got my ID and psh, right on, bro. Like I got my license. I got my first car. Like. We're all celebrating these little victories. Some people have nobody. I'm blessed to have a, a, like a, a support network of family and friends and, and mentors. Yeah, some people just don't have that. But we take care of them. Like it's a brotherhood right there, and and there's a lot of love. Like it's a trip. Like these are con- like convicted murderers and people that are in life sentence, right. but literally like the best quality of society. Mm, right. Like the best people in society. Like. There's some of the most amazing yeah, people yeah. in this house, you know. I, I part of what I do here is I, I, um, it's really just networking. I'm a jobs coordinator, whatever, right? I go out there try to get jobs on the construction sites, but uh, one of the easiest things for me, and I can say it with certainty, is when I have a group of lifers that go through our training, it's so fucking easy for me to be like, tell the employer, tell the contractor, I got a guy, don't worry about it. When it's a lifer to me, I'm like. You don't even understand. This fucking guy yeah. is going to be there two hours earlier yeah, yeah. with a smile on his face. Yeah, you know, yeah. like not let alone you don't have to worry about anything with these fucking guy. He's gonna work ten times harder, and you don't have to tell that they automatic. Yeah, it's a different outlook that you have on life. You know. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge too is like going like when I went to get my birth certificate, like having to explain like what, oh, what do you man. where you been like you know yeah. like yeah, I, was, yeah. I was incarcerated you know. I mean, what, you, what what DMV did you go to? I went to one in Van Nuys. Okay. Yeah, and it was funny because they go, we only give out newborns, and I was like, I'm a newborn. I live uh, yeah. like two weeks at this point. Like, do I qualify to be a newborn? Mm-hmm. You know. But like, my stuff had been gone because I was born in '77, so the paperwork had transferred to like computer, and like right, it was long right. gone. I had to petition Sacramento, and Damn. like the whole thing. But um, yeah, like I, I'm making my little progress. Like, I got my my debit card like a couple months nice, ago yeah, yeah, yeah. and just the idea of like it's so weird like you work and then like with the plastic and like you just tap it, it. I, I still can't I, I, still, know, right? I still can't connect like even when i go to buy something sometimes like i'll panic like if it doesn't have the tap thing i'll go to my girlfriend like go like <laughs> what i do swipe, yeah. yeah like it's it's weird it's it's difficult but i still can't like i guess i connect it to canteen in there you just put the laundry bag and the money you right. know and hey, like you guys got my list you know what goes in there huh? yeah but it's it's so crazy like and I met, I got my first paycheck, like, when I got that. Mm, like, my nice. bosses were so cool. They're like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, every aspect of life is just so exciting. Like, I'm, I'm grateful, like, on so many levels. Like, I wake up just, like, phew, unbelievable. Right, mm-hmm. right. And I, I continuously have these moments where I'm just like, damn. Like, I'm out here. You're fucking right. free, I'm bro. I'm out here. You're free. You know? I'm out here. Sitting in traffic is a blast. Right. You know? <laughs> like not to not to uh, hun- not to the no. rest of the twenty million people yeah. in, in uh, California, right, yeah. but you know, one of my top things, favorite things to do is laundry. Really, I love doing laundry. Oh, like, you get tired. I stay on the phone. Like I got a shirt with like purple. It's a Lakers shirt with gold. Is that good <laughs> colors or like you know? Like I'm making those phone calls, you know. But like just every aspect of life is is is, is like a joy. There's hard parts, you know. Like you know, you feel dumb sometimes, like on simple things in mm. life. But you know. Take it with stride. I'll make a joke out of it or something like that. Right. Yeah. You know? what, what do you think about this? This I had a I had a um like I was able to like come to this conclusion that a lot of lifers that I've worked with, I can honestly say I probably work with three hundred plus. Mm. You know, not everyone to the same level. Again, yeah. some people just I I I think it's like a 50-50 sometimes where where lifers get out. Fifty percent, I feel like they put it in their head that they can't do some things. And there's the other 50 that are like, I don't know how to do it, 
but give it to me and I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll, what Dang. do you think that is? Yeah, that's a trip because, and I had this conversation with some dudes in the house where there's like this narrative that we develop like before we get out, like life's going to be fast and we're not, we're not going to be able to adapt. And like yeah. you, you tell yourself, and then when you get to the transition, they're like, slow down, life's going to hit you. Like um, you, you can quickly resort back to who you were like when you left. So you're essentially, you're walking around with a bomb inside of you or that could, you know, your boss might cuss you out. I, I, I don't subscribe to that. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I refuse to subscribe to that. I think that's self-defeating talk. Correct. And I have this conversation like with a lot of the guys in the house, like, like we have the internal skills. Like we're we're built unlike anybody out here. Like we mm-hmm. know ourselves. Like I, I'm emotionally intelligent. Like mm-hmm. I know when I feel something. Like I know what to do with that emotion. I know what triggers me, and and, and I'm able to make the decision in that moment. So all we have to do is just execute. Like fear of what, you know? Like, That's a dope way to put you it. You know, like be looking stupid. Like oh well. You know, yeah. We, I'm 45, like getting my my first debit card. I am stupid. <laughs> right, <laughs> I mean, like, right. So it's just like I- embracing it, like and and just going with it. Like, I mean, who cares? No, we're free. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Like, yeah. who cares? And most of the guys in the house, they're doing it. Like, you see that moment that it's it's scary, but they just boom, they go at it. Yeah, I, I can imagine, bro, being on a on a bus somewhere in South Central. You're on parole. You're fresh out. 30 years. You're, you're trying to get your EBT going, your yeah. whatever, and you're yeah. like, holy shit, you know? Like, it's a lot. W- what do I do? Is it still money? How much does it cost? Yeah. Do, where do I... You don't even know about Google Maps yet or Yelp or anything. Like, how, yeah, how's yeah. that place over there? Let me... St- learning how to do all these things, yeah. I can imagine. It's it's a fucking struggle. But like you said, you've been through so much where you welcome that. You know, yeah. why wouldn't you? And when you, when you do it, like, the biggest things for me was my independence. Like, when I would start going out alone. Because mm. at first you're going out with people. When you start going out alone, your confidence builds. Now, now I, can, I know how to order an Uber and I can go over here and, like, nice. buy something and Uber back. Like, right. it sounds small, but, like, I remember getting the Uber and I told her, like, you know you're my first Uber. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> You'll never guess where I've been for the last 30 years. Like, and I had, like, a bomb-ass conversation with my uh, Uber driver. Like, you know? Do, and, do, do people trip out when you drop that bomb on them? If you do, when I you do, I stay dropping it. Like, guess where, guess where I've been, like, my whole life. Like, you know? Fuck. Yeah. Because... It, it, Here's the thing, like, you know, when you had the civil, we're in a prison reform movement. Like, when you had the civil rights movement, like, you needed black people to stand up and be the front. When you had women's suffrage, you needed women. We're in a prison reform Ooh. movement, so we need lifers we need to stand lifers. up and say, look, like, like I, I was a lifer, I did this. The greatest compliment I get, like, my girlfriend tells me, when I met you, I would have never known that you done 29 years in jail by, by, mm-hmm. by talking to you. You know, yeah, you're gonna see the tattoos, and there might be some mannerisms. Looks or like something. looks like two and a half. You know. Yeah, half, yeah. Right? <laughs> but she goes by like your personality and who you are. Like, I would have never imagined. Right. You know, that's like the greatest compliment I can get. You know. Yeah. No. And you know what? That I think that's um that applies to a lot of folks. You know, no one knows. No one really knows. No one's out here asking. Life is too fucked up and too selfish out here. Yeah. People are just gonna walk right past you. They don't really. They're not gonna ask. They're not. You know, it's up to you how you carry yourself with that you know yeah and um, when you do share the story like people are blown away mm-hmm. and it changes perspectives right you know it changes the way they look at things like damn okay you know it really does yeah, yeah. and they get to see some of the shit you're going through like bro what do you mean you appreciate this pretzel yeah like yeah i really do i haven't had a pretzel in 29 years i yeah and they're like holy shit maybe i should start appreciating hopefully that type of stuff rubs off on and i guarantee right. you it leaves an impression on people yeah you know when did it? When did a coffee jump to twelve dollars? It was fifty Jesus cents. Jesus Christ! Oh. Right? Yeah. It I'm was still, fifty cents honestly, when I left. Now they're man. like thirteen dollars, and it takes like a minute to mm-hmm. order it. Like, you see know? the gas prices? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gas? What, what were gas <laughs> prices? When you, we, I, I don't. I don't even remember. Like they weren't over a dollar. Like I don't. Care. Right? Like, Couldn't have been that, yeah, right? Yeah. It's insane, man. Well, technology too. I'm sure that's tech. been like a whole like the, the only iPhones. phones were the big great ones. <laughs> you don't remember those either. They, they Are were the like, square ones? They're like, the like yeah, yeah. Like, I looking. wasn't even around for that, but I seen a couple movies with them. You know? Like Scarface had it. Like right. that was the yep. only one yep. that had like that phone right there. It, it, we honestly, bro, it, it's just crazy to see someone coming out and be so like heavily hearted and be able to. You're someone I could respect. Thank you. Ideally, you're someone I could respect. At the end of the day, because you know what you've been through. You did your time, and you came out. You come out not only 
with a good heart, but to actually make a change and inspire others. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And so even being an outsider, seeing it, bro, like a lot of respect to you, and I appreciate you being out here. That shit's dope, man. That shit is dope, Thank and your you so story much. is so loud, and we love it. We appreciate you so much for that, man. For Thank real. you guys, man. I appreciate yep. the opportunity. Big yeah, time. yeah, no worries. So I know we, we we went a little bit, you know, but uh, I hope that was good. You know, they 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 get to see some of the story. I know you've been on a few podcasts, but again, we're telling your story in a different way. We have different personalities, so we figured let's have you on. You know, and you blessed us too. You reached out, and we appreciate that. Yeah, Seriously, so you know, a lot of people. You know, in this game, people, some people want to share their story. Some people don't, yeah. you know, but uh, amazing fucking story. Um, it's a work in progress. You're still right, not absolutely. right. Um, yeah, yeah. You're, you're doing everything you need every day mm -hmm. um, and you're gaining life experiences from it. What else could be better? You know, you're getting a second chance at life, essentially. Yeah, so, yeah, right. Yeah. Fucking, you know, shit. So with that said, Reentry Network podcast, my boy, Brian James Lonely. Um, oh. shared his testimony so go ahead mess with us we gonna keep him coming 